Man, I got to get somebody over there to grease that vault door. Sometimes it sticks. I was pressing the buttons here. I don't know. Maybe I was pressing the wrong buttons. Working good now, though. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Uh, thank you for hanging out. Appreciate everybody being here. Uh, my name is Kismet, of course. Uh, welcome to my stream. Sometimes they call me Overseer Kismet. Sometimes they call me the Wasteland Tycoon. Uh, we're going to play some games today. Lots of amazing stuff uh, lined up for you guys. I'm telling you. Stacking it, stacking is stacking it for you guys here on the stream uh, tonight. Of course, Fallout 4, uh, No Man's Sky, and a bonus uh, Learn to Play uh, at the end of the stream. What are we playing again tonight? We're playing Dungeon Hunter Champions. Now, I've never played the game before. I love to try different games. Of course, maybe turn you guys on to an awesome game that you guys may want to play. Uh, I'm trying to be better about sitting up as well. Uh, big time in here. Uh, and thanks for being here, uh, everybody. And let's see what we got here in the chat. Let's say hello. Uh, oh, oh, Raz getting timed out there. Look out, Raz. Make sure you're following those chat rules. Uh, let's see what's up here. We got, uh, uh Foggy the Frog saying hi. Well, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Uh, talking about Fallout 76 there, I see. Uh, yes, don't be advertising other people's channel or their YouTube or anything like that uh, in my chat, please. Uh, that is one of my rules, of course. Uh, make sure to uh, follow those rules. Uh, no links or advertising of other channels. Appreciate that. Appreciate that in the chat. Yes, uh, Fallout 76 does look great. I have been avoiding watching the gameplay. And you're like, Kismet, what? You're like a massive Fallout fan. Why would you not be watching the gameplay? Well, because I want to have that first vault experience with you guys watching live. Now, just so you know, I got an invite today into the beta. So I could go into the beta ahead of time and play the game and try it out uh, and help them give some feedback and whatnot to the game except for I can't stream it and I can't show it to you guys. So it is a non-disclosure uh, uh, kind of like if I were to do that. And I'm kind of going back and forth whether I want to do that or not. Probably not. I, I would prefer to get in the stress test beta on the 23rd that I could stream and have that first fall experience and have you guys go along with me, right? As opposed to jumping ahead Though that does give me an advantage, I could go in and show off uh, gameplay, and I know a bit more about the game when the game launched, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I've kind of opted out for it right at the moment. Now, also, there's another reason why I haven't opted in, and that is I don't have my Xbox yet. I don't have it till the 15th, which is Monday. So uh, I, don't, I don't have the ability to actually play, though I could... In theory, a borrow a friend's Xbox. I could have Monster Holic send his to me, or I could go. I uh, do have a neighbor uh, that has an Xbox as well, so I could always go over there and uh, get that Xbox and put it on there and do all of that. But uh, I feel like uh, I don't know. I feel like I should just get my Xbox setup working first, and then uh, do all that other stuff after that. Uh, and just do it on the 23rd. Because I don't want the storyline ruined. I don't want those oh, awesome moments uh, to be taken away from me live here in the stream that I want to have with you guys, of course. Now, of course, no spoilers. Don't tell us anything about the actual storyline. Now, of course, we can talk game mechanics. That's okay. We can talk about the beta and how to get into the beta and all that other stuff we've been talking about along the way. Because that's, uh, that's uh, you know, interesting uh, uh, potential information about the game. Game that does not spoil uh, anything about the actual physical storyline of the game or locations of the game. I saw there was a map or something like that. Someone sent me. I said, no, I don't want to see the map. I don't want to see nothing. I don't want to know about the storyline. I don't want to know uh, about what happens when you leave the vault or anything like that yet. Yet until I get to play it for the first time live here on stream. Uh, so I have been avoiding all of that information. So if you do send me that information... I'm going to let you know that I'm not going to look at it. I will not be looking at it, uh, but I do appreciate you guys sending it to me. I, I I do get a lot of whispers. Hey, Kismet, did you see this? And Kismet, I saw this. And have you been watching this? And I, I, I have a bunch of people in my feed that I see that have seen various, uh, that got to go to the thing from Bethesda and all of that stuff. Really jelly that I didn't get to go. But, you know, I guess I'm just not as big as some of those other streamers and those other YouTubers. But, oh, well, I'll get there hopefully one day. Uh, we'll see. But, uh, you know, I don't mind. I don't mind if I'm under NDA and I can't share it with you guys, then there's no real reason. I mean, I could go and just try to help make make it better. 
which is great, but I'm I'm too busy. I'm too busy for that. I got stuff to do. I got stuff to get done uh, in, in prep of the actual launch of the game, which, of course, we're going to be playing a crazy ton of it here on the stream. I'm lining up a whole bunch of other stuff, worrying about TwitchCon, worrying about getting my mods there. I got four out of my five mod shirts, by the way. I do have them. They're sitting right over here. Uh, but the fifth one has not arrived, so I'm getting a little... Worried about that. I did look at it. It said it was in transit, whatnot. Maybe they printed, even though that was the first one I requested, it's still in transit to me. So I'm just waiting for it to show up. Uh, hopefully it shows up soon. I did get some other cool stuff too uh, for my cosplay, including custom socks. That's right. Kismet socks. And I'll be giving out uh, some at TwitchCon if you want some custom, awesome Kismet socks. Uh, I will be dishing those out to you guys along with a whole bunch of other epic loot. Again, get those Kiss Caps, bros. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Kiz Caps, host the channel. Go out there, retweet the channel. I'm warning you, man. You guys are going to be so bummed if you don't win some of this epic loot. I've been working so hard to bring you guys a ton of epic loot. So please, please, please. Uh, Zuki said, I'm avoiding it too. Yeah, you want to have that first moment experience. You know, you want to have a good balance between, you know, oh man, I want to see what's going on with it, but mm, not everything, right? Not all the spoilers. I want to have that. Want to have that moment uh, to go in there and have some fun. Uh, Siggy Wiggy says hi, guys. Hello, Siggy Wiggy. Thank you for being here. And thanks to my mods, by the way. I uh, usually open with them. Uh, they are here backing me up. Let's see who we got tonight. Uh, we have got a Josie and Gwen. Uh, another uh, couple heavy hitters here. Uh, awesome mods in their own right. We also got Crazy coming in later, backing me up. Uh, tons of awesome people backing me up tonight. I appreciate all the love. Uh, of course, uh, you're going to get to meet them at TwitchCon as well. We'll be walking around uh, as well. Now, if somebody sees gaming fun, uh, if we see gaming's fun here in the channel. Now, I went a little bit above and beyond uh, to find out, because uh, gaming con, uh, or gaming's fun, sorry, gaming con, I'm thinking TwitchCon in my head. Uh, gaming's fun uh, actually uh, asked for only one streamer. One streamer in the whole entire of Twitch. And I'm like, oh, it's going to be like Ninja or like Shroud or Dr. Disrespect. Some of the top streamers up there, right? Uh, some at 1G and all those other people. Nope. Uh, Lady Devin, that's it. Lady Devin is the only one uh, that he or she asked for. I forget if it's he or she, but you guys know me. Sleep apnea is all I got to say. Uh, that uh, that they wanted signed, but but she went on to work for Bethesda. So she's not actually streaming anymore. So she actually works for Bethesda. So I reached out to her on Twitter and I said, hey, I got a member of mine, uh, a, a community member who uh, asked, who donated to get my mods to TwitchCon. And out of all the people there, even more than me, <laughs> wanted her signature uh, on uh, the Wasteland Tycoon or just in general. Uh, so I said, you know, can I get your signature if it's okay with you? Because, you you know, I don't like to be real pushy. I don't like to say, well, here, you have to sign this, right? Because that's a real jerk way to approach people. Uh, you know, if you could, if you're around or whatnot. And she said, you know what? Even if I don't make it there, I will go ahead and uh, send the signature for that person. I thought, oh, that was super sweet. And then I found out uh, she tweeted me back and said, you know what? I will be there at TwitchCon. I will be at the Bethesda booth at TwitchCon. And I said, cool, we'll come by with a Wasteland Tycoon uh, t-shirt if you can sign it. She said, sounds good to me. So there you go, gaming's fun. I hooked you up. Kismet going out of his way for his community, showing you some love. Showing you some love. I'm hooking you guys up. You don't have any idea. I'm hooking you guys up, like majorly hooking you up. Oh, man, there's so much work, though. So much work hooking you guys up, but you guys are worth it. You guys are worth it. So let's get into it. I'm ready to build some stuff. I don't know about you. Wander around the wasteland. We got to get these done. We got about a week left. I think, uh, yeah, about a week uh, from... Uh, from Tuesday, uh, we've got to get some stuff done. Oh, Silky Paws coming in with the love. Uh, thank you so much for that host as well. Uh, let me go ahead and jump over to my other thing. I'll give you guys a bit of a shout out. Let's go. Oh, I see you in the chat, Just Alcara. I see you in there showing that love. Don't worry, we got your t-shirt ready, too. I got that sitting right over here in a special box going to TwitchCon. Now, I was going to ship that stuff out, but now I'm so nervous about those t-shirts that I'm actually going to hand carry those to TwitchCon and then make sure that uh, I hand those to my 
uh, my awesome mods, uh, my reliable uh, mods, and they will go and they will get as many signatures as they can. Of course, specific ones that you've asked for as best we can. No guarantees. Like I said, they may not even be there. Um, but yeah, I went, I'm going above and beyond for you guys, as you can see by that last example. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, Josie coming in with the host. Raz with the host as well. Game killer with a host. You guys know how to do it. You guys know how to get those kids guys. You went some epic loot. Uh, there we go. Uh, Ultron coming in as well. Brutal. And of course, Silky Paws with that big host. Thank you so much for being here, Silky. Thank you for bringing your community into my channel. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the stream. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, we're going to play some Fallout 4. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Uh, right now, uh, we, of course, are doing some mega building here at this uh, location, which is called the Lighthouse, uh, right over here. Uh, the Kingsport Lighthouse, uh, you guys have chosen that you wanted me to build here next, and we're getting it going on. Look at this thing. This thing is huge. Now, I was going to build a two-story, but I think one story ought to do it. Uh, we've got uh, some kill boxes to go, and then you guys are going to vote on where I'm going to build next. Now, I'm going to speed up a little bit uh, when because we are running out of time to build these vaults across the wasteland is what basically I'm doing. I'm building a vault at every single settlement. Now, some settlements like Bunker Hill and, uh, uh, and our other place over here, which I forget the name of so often, Covenant, uh, right there, we are probably not going to convert in this particular playthrough. We will probably not have enough time uh, because I have so many things going on. But we will try. We will try to get at least to all of the various ones as well. Uh, we're going to work our way down. We're going to talk a bit about Fallout 76 as well. I do hear that the Charisma line, uh, Bethesda themselves said the Charisma line is fantastic for helping other people. Now, if you want to be part of the 76 Wasteland crew, if you want to play with me uh, and you got an Xbox, uh, let me know. Go on, to the, go on to the thing and let me know. Uh, big time. Uh, hey, Kesman, here to share the love. How are you good, sir? I am doing fantastic. I am doing so good. So many awesome things lined up and fun things to do. Uh, Robotic uh, Marmont uh, coming in. Welcome, welcome. Why can't we talk sports? Aha, every rule has a reason, right? I don't mind sports. I do uh, enjoy myself some baseball, mostly. Occasionally some football. Do like to watch the Super Bowl. Do like to watch the World Series. I do uh, enjoy talking about sports from time to time. I am definitely not a sports encyclopedia. I will not be raffling off in 1972, so-and-so did the thing. But if you like to do that, more power to you. Uh, but what happens is people come in my chat. They say, hey, I love this team. And then somebody else in the chat will say, that team sucks. And then this other person will say, no, you suck. And then they say, you do suck. And it becomes like high school all over again. I've actually had that happen several times in my chat. And that's why I added that rule. Now, if you don't like that rule, of course, there are many streams around here where you can talk about whatever you want. You can cuss and curse and do all that stuff. Try to keep it PG-13 in my channel. Try to keep it very uh, friendly uh, as well. Uh, so that is why that rule is in place. Always remember that rules are there for a reason. Uh, again, uh, I don't mean to bum you out or uh, make it where you can't talk about your favorite things. There's plenty of places in the world to do so, uh, but they're there for a reason. Uh, Jared says, hello, hello, Jared. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. Welcome, everybody. Uh, appreciate you all coming in tonight. So let's get into more Fallout 4. Now, I've got a level up here. Now, I'm, I'm at a level now. I'm at level 107, which the game gets really easy if you're in normal mode right after level 40, I find. Uh, right, 40, 50, gets super easy. So I didn't even bother finishing it in normal. I did play about 500 hours in normal mode. Said, yeah, this is getting too easy. So I started all over again. So on my second playthrough, I played through in the old survival mode, as they call it now. Played that all the way through. Very tough in the very beginning, especially when you're learning to use your companions as your kind of tank. Send them out first and try to get that going. Played that all the way through. Finished it on the railroad line. Then I went through, played it through again. This time in the new survival mode with some of that DLC which came out about that time. Played it all the way through. Crushed that playthrough as well. Then we played through it again. That's right, starting over once again, uh, but this time in survival mode, in the hardest mode you can play, uh, in the new survival mode, plus 
of course, with conditions on inability to quick travel, all of that stuff, as well as we played it in melee mode. So the hardest mode, the hardest way you can play it, played it all the way through, crushed it, destroyed it. Uh, of course, uh, that's why they call me the Wasteland Tycoon, because I make millions of caps, no cheating, no shortcutting, no glitching. I can do it in vanilla. I can do it on PS4, Xbox, and so can you. You can be a Wasteland Tycoon as well, just like Robotic right there, who just dropped the Dragon Hammer, crushed the follow button, and became part of the Wasteland Tycoons. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. So yes, I played through many times. I have 2,500 hours plus uh, live here on Twitch. Been playing this is day one. I've never stopped. I played the entire Fallout series. In fact, I probably saw Fallout before any of you. Some of you were born, but some of you, uh, uh, even if you were born, I've probably seen it before because I was a graphic designer. And the place where I worked, their client was actually Interplay, who is, of course, the originator of Fallout series, who eventually, of course, licensed it and uh, sold it to Bethesda, who then, of course, went on to make the amazing Fallout 3 and, of course, Fallout New Vegas. So, oh, you New Vegas out there, right? I know you New Vegas out there. Tunnel Snake lovers, too. Tunnel Snake's rule, right? Uh, and, of course, Fallout 4 I really love because I love the building. I love the building part of it on top of the RPG and the Fallout universe and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so, of course, another thing that I'm really going to enjoy is Fallout 76, which, of course, we can all play together, build our kill boxes, build a bunch of stuff up. I did hear they were going to do co-op building, uh, which I really, really enjoy in games like Seven Days to Die, Ark, uh, Dark and Light, games like that. I love that co-op building and co-op working together uh, toward a common goal. Oh, man, that is really, really fun. Uh, and I can't wait to try it out in Fallout 76. I do have the beta version on both the Xbox and on PC. I have the Collector's Edition on the PC. I have the Collector's Xbox Special Edition early release from GameStop, ordered and ready to go to play that uh, Xbox beta. Going to show up on the 15th, and I was invited to be part of the beta. But if I can't show it to you guys, if I can't show it to you on stream, then I would rather not do it, and I will wait uh, until such a time in which I can't. Uh, so hopefully that comes up uh, on there. So loud, enthusiastic. I like it. Oh, yes, I do. I do love me some stuff. The only thing I know sports related is the Blood Bowl, which is a video game that isn't related to IRL. So does that count? Uh, it's a game. I guess we could I guess we can slide with that. I mean, if you want to talk about sports games, I'm down with that. Yeah, but as long as we don't get into a battle about, you know, my sports guys are better than your sports guys. You know, like here in Tennessee, I mean, they're. There's some sport team that if you came to Tennessee, they get very, very angry, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Now, because I am married to somebody from Tennessee, I'm from California, by the way, uh, so uh, my teams are from California, but uh, um, I am by, uh, by marriage, uh, I have to vote for uh, the local uh, Tennessee teams. Uh, so there you go. I am required by marriage to do so. <laughs> uh, so let's get into it here. Let's see. Uh, what do I really need? I don't really need anything in here. I mean, I am so OP already. Um, but let's see. What do I feel like doing that we haven't done in a long time? I'm not going to use sneak. Don't need pistols. You know, I rarely ever use this endurance line. See, that's the thing I rarely do. It's just rarely ever push down endurance. You know what? I feel like let's just go ahead and just pump it into our various different things here. Uh, and see if we can get these all up to maximum, right? How we do it looking on luck? Luck, we need one more to get to max there, right? Or are we already at max? Let's see, luck's at... Do one more in luck. Charisma's max. I always max my charisma when I'm doing a Wasteland Tycoon playthrough, which is where I make millions of caps. Uh, actually, on the neighbor of billions of caps now. Uh, I say we just go luck. What the heck? We're just going to pump it into the main stats uh, until the end of this playthrough, I feel like. Uh, there we go. Now, of course, right now we are uh, doing some mega building. Now, I build at three different levels. I build at a uh, basic level, of course, uh, when I first start. There we go. Uh, I build at a basic level when I first start. I go ahead and throw down some sleeping bags, some mute fruit, uh, some water, and, of course, the kismet. Kill box, which we're going to build some of those. Uh, we've got some right up here, and we'll talk a bit about those in just a moment. Uh, because it does have a tendency to respawn right here at the lighthouse. So what are we building? We're building that. That's right, that big, massive thing up there. Now, when I'm building, I do take you guys into consideration. So I do try to uh, uh, kind of forward time toward the daytime so you guys can see what I'm doing. 
Now, if you have a comment or question for me, my name is Kismet. You can put Kiz or Kismet in the chat. It'll highlight in red, so I know you're talking to me. Though I do watch my chat very closely as well. Sometimes I'll be talking in stream uh, about various things. I'll be chatting for a little bit, and then I'll come back to my chat. And I kind of go back and forth uh, like that. So let's see how we're doing here. We're probably going to get a bit of a fog, but at least it'll be daytime. There we go. It's always kind of foggy in this area. Uh, so there we go. Of course, rainy now. Let's go ahead and see if we can forward a little bit more. Now, I find the weather changes uh, usually about three hours. Uh, and I think we've already gone about two hours into there. So let's go one more hour. See if we can just go ahead and get that rain out of there. Oh, there's somebody right there. Now, I've got to be careful because I forgot to take my uh, thing out of there. My uh, fusion core out of there. And people will jump in my power armor. There we go. There's a nice day. Always good to be careful about that. I've actually had Trash Can Carla jump in my power armor and take off with it. <laughs> you got to watch out for that. Especially since uh, this is a very uh, unique power armor. This is the Nuka-Cola Quantum Power Armor. My favorite power armor in the game. Uh, of course, from the Nuka World uh, DLC. Rocking it right now. Legendary uh, power armor, uh, XO one power armor that actually does boost your action refresh. Uh, which I like. I like that a lot. Uh, and, of course, we'll go up here. We'll take that floating thing down. I can't handle stuff to be floating. But we leave it there just to protect us while we are building this insanely massive vault. Now, I don't work on supports in the beginning. I always work on that later because you never know. You might change it around and decide you want to do something else with it. Uh, now, one of the things we wanted to do from last time uh, is we wanted to go ahead and add a little something-something right over here. Now, I'm going to be in my power armor while I work on it. And uh, sometimes you want to work from the bottom up, and sometimes you want to work from the top down. And we're going to try from the top down here. So we're going to go up these stairs here, which I have kind of like scaffolding to get up and down. Though I could go through the middle of the uh, lighthouse to do so. Right here. There we go. Now when we get up here, you're going to hear a lot of wind noise. Uh, so I'm going to kind of crank that down a little bit here. Uh, let me get my uh, mixer up. There we go. I'm gonna crank that down just a little bit while we're here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make a quicker way to get up and down uh, without me having to go up and down uh, the stairwells or up and down the various different areas. Though I probably won't. Once I get this built up, I probably won't uh, come by here very often. But just in case I do, we'll go ahead and start adding some elevators. Now, I like to start uh, with a very uh, large elevator here like this one which is the four one now notice how it went way up there you can try to grab it and pull it down like this but it does act a bit awkward when you're trying to snap it so i find if you get over the edge and kind of uh, put it down the edge like this then you have a better chance now notice how it did that again again scroll wheel and then try to line it up in such a way see that oh the uh snapping in this game can be insanely frustrating can be very, very difficult because it doesn't do what you think it would do, right? Like right there, you would think, oh, wait, okay, wait, hold on. It should go down further, right? See, there's like a little subtle part there, right? Where it does it does either the, the top one, the top little part, or it does the bottom of the entire thing. And there we go. So we've got that going. You can see we've got four levels down. And we want to keep working our way down from there. Of course, we're going to need to run some power, but conveniently we have some right here that we've already run uh we'll try to run it over here uh as well let's see where is it so i run it toward it and then try to find the edge which i think is on this side yeah i think it's on that side now of course if we do fall off wah! we of course got our power armor to help us and look how far we need to go down to reach down here uh, so we're going to continue to do that, uh, continue to work our way down. Now, to make it easier on yourself, uh, I suggest uh, to go in and use a lot of various scaffolding when you're working with stuff that's really high up. Uh, so I use a lot of uh, wood stairs just to kind of uh, fill in that area. Of course, we'll take all this out later, uh, but a great little temporary thing to help you build. And I've built a lot of structures, a massive amount. Uh, I have uh, built uh, thousands of hours worth of uh, mega builds. And if you'd like to see those, those are my YouTube channels. I do put every uh, one of my videos up there as well. Uh, Fallout 3 Combat or Fallout 76 Story? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know anything about it until I play it live here on stream. 
Uh, the only thing I know is we're with Blood Bowl. I think I had that already. Uh, so you like building? Uh, if you had a choice between Settlement Faction, would you choose the Nuka World Raiders or the Minutemen? I choose the Minutemen every time. Uh, because I spent all this time uh, going in and uh, building stuff and building up my settlements and, you know, doing these mega builds and all that stuff. And then they tell me to go attack my settlements. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, and that's why they all had to die. So guess who owns the Wasteland? This guy, the Wasteland Tycoon. Guess who owns Nuka World? This guy. Guess who took over Far Harbor? This guy. That's right. Also bought out the remnants of uh, the vault Tech and, of course, wiped out the Institute. They're a big pile of rubble right now. Took over the entire Wasteland. And you know that kid that works at Diamond City? That kid is rich because he works for me now. Uh, the purified water kid. That's right. He's living in the upper stands. And I even got him elected mayor of Diamond City. There you go. Couldn't do any worse than the last mayor, that's for sure. Uh, so, yeah, my peeps are doing quite well, including all my vendors and whatnot that I've gone to. They have literally made millions of caps and living the good life. Living the good life. All right. Uh, right here on stream. And again, if you'd like to see this playthrough from the very beginning, you can check that out uh, also on the YouTubers. On the Tubadubers. Boom. All right. Looking good. We got that stacked. Oh, wait. We got that stacked a little bit. Not good. Now, one of the things that uh, about this is Contraptions DLC right here. Uh, one of the things I don't like about the stairwell is they did it really poorly uh, in the fact that you can't stack them uh, on top of each other. Now, it was me, and if they asked me, I would have told them uh, that that uh, is a terrible way to do stairs uh, or elevators. Uh, the elevators, what happens is you can't stack them on top of each other, number one. So if you're building something like this, uh, you would, of course, want them to be stacked, right? So you have one elevator that goes up and down. And you don't want to have a top to the stairs you want it when you put some or i mean the uh the elevator when you put the top uh the this one on the bottom of the other one it should of course continue to go the entire way up now that might have been too difficult for them to do didn't have enough time whatever the reason was uh but that would definitely be one of my suggestions for fallout 76 is to make it where those uh function a bit better than this kind of offsetting uh, stairwell that you have constantly have to do. So you have to offset, I have to put one stairwell or one elevator, offset that elevator, and then offset the elevator again, right? So you got to have a do a stacking elevator instead of just using one elevator to go up and down. Now, some settlements like Abernathy Farm are 20 stories high. So if you had 20 story building there, <laughs> that'd be kind of difficult because you would do, be doing a bunch of offset, though I have done that before. I have built that out before. All right, so this allows us to have a nice little area over here uh, that we can utilize uh, as a quick way to get up and down. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just see if we can snap something in here. There we go. We'll get that snapped in there. We'll snap it over here. We'll try to get this one to snap. Now, this one's not letting me snap because the workbench is right in that other area there. But that's okay. We can kind of work around that a little bit with our small ones here uh, and just kind of give it kind of a half thing there and maybe take this out like this and we'll actually we'll do another half one here create kind of a little bit of a landing like that there we go now we're getting somewhere and then because this one can snap uh to stuff like this and go underground it makes those one of the best stairs in there and i'm gonna actually just go ahead and double that up and see if it lets me have double stairs there i think that rock is blocking me can't quite get it, but that's okay. We can just go right up here. Now, the cool thing is also I have power down here. You can see I've got power up here. So I can just run that power right to there. And I could, I could also, by the way, uh, rotate this around so that the power is also on that side. And then I got to kind of work my magic a little bit here because it's going to be awkward like that. Uh, it's going to be a bit awkward to put that line in there. So we've got to take this out, rotate this around. Then we have to put in something that's going to make it where it's not clipping on that side uh, and go through all that rigmarole. But I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it back the way it was just to make it easy on me, like so. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and run that back down. There we go. Uh, oh, got to rotate it one more. There we go. Uh, and then we want to go ahead and, of course, connect it from one to the other and then from that one up to the top one. And that's, again, why we left our stairs here so we can get up here and be good to go. 
So yeah, I love the build in the game. Uh, I know that the building in Fallout 76 is going to be greatly diminished versus Fallout 4 uh, because there's not going to be a bunch of settlements that you go to and you build up and all of that stuff. Uh, it's going to be more of you have your camp and that's it. Uh, I don't know if you can have multiple camps or not. Uh, it does look greatly improved from what I've seen in the menus. I have not watched the gameplay, but I do uh, see that the menus have done it. Now, there's a lot of people out there right now showing gameplay. I have been avoiding it on purpose uh, because I want to have that first uh, playthrough experience with you guys live here on stream. Uh, I can't stream the current beta, even though I've been, been invited to the current beta. Uh, so I am going to probably avoid that. Also, I don't have an Xbox until next Monday where I pick up my uh, custom Fallout 76 Xbox uh, from GameStop, uh, my early release edition, uh, in which I need to get working with my system and all of that stuff. So that'll be a whole, bu whole fun uh, couple of days, I'm sure, if not more, uh, getting that to work. So there we go. We've run all the power. Let's go ahead and test it out. Uh, let's go ahead and go up to the third floor here. And that should take us up to here and then up we go again again I would like this to all be one continuous thing would be great right where it says four five six seven eight nine ten right on the side here and that will take us all the way up to the top of the thing now of course they're gonna come up a different way they're gonna walk their way up uh, right here and I've already tested that they can make it uh, and you can see I'm running power down through the middle of the area here and they can go ahead and walk up from down there and use the pre-existing stairs uh, to come up into this area here. And we'll again, we'll take all that other scaffolding and whatnot out. Again, very, very windy up here, so we'll turn that down just a little bit. Uh, so let's get back to the chat here. So you like building? I do like building. Uh, Minutemen, I, yeah, Preston's my bro, uh, my bro as well. I do like Preston. He, uh, the thing, the reason why people like Preston is not because of anything that he does. He, he helps the small uh, the uh, guy that can't help himself, he's always looking out for other people. Great storyline, great uh, uh, in-depth story for Preston. But he doesn't give you a choice, and that's why you dislike him. Because he says, here's a settlement, here's a settlement, here's a quest. You have no choice. You have to go do this now or you will fail the quest. That's what he does, right? I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that uh, Bethesda did with uh, Preston and why people don't like him. Is because you don't have a choice. Now, if he said, hey, Kismet, I got this quest for you. The settlement needs your help. And I'm like, hey, whoa, 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 Preston. You know, I'm playing survival mode here, bro. I'm playing survival mode. There ain't no way I'm getting all the way to the other side. I'm only level five. Ain't no way I'm getting to the other side of the zone uh, at this level and be able to finish that quest and then get back here and turn it to you in time. Could you take, could you hold on to the quest? Can you hold on until I level up a little bit? I'll come back and get it. He's like, Kismet, I got your back. No problem. I'll hold on to the quest. You come back to me when you're ready to do the quest. But he doesn't do that, does he? No, he does not. He just gives it to you and he says, here you go. And that's it. Uh, and I think that would have been way better if Preston had not uh, done that. I think uh, I think people would have liked Preston a lot more. I like Preston. I like all of the companions in Fallout 4. Of course, dog meat the most. Uh, the only one I don't like is McCready because I always feel like he's going to backstab me all, at any moment. Uh, but I know I, I, he's grown on me a little bit, a little bit. But he's still he's still a little creepy. I feel like he I feel like if someone paid him more caps, though I seriously doubt anybody's got more caps than me in the wasteland, uh, that he would backstab me in a second. Uh, Nuka Cola Quantum X01, I got that one too. Yeah, Jared. Oh man, it's my favorite. It's my favorite in the game. It's so awesome. Uh, DJ getting that lurking going on, using that stealth boy. Look out! That mayor shot that young security guard. Good thing I had Curie with me. I know, huh? Uh, I turned Curie into a murder bot and took her around before I did whatever we do in the second part. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who actually hasn't played Fallout 4. But, uh, yeah, I used her as a murder bot, and I go around, and she would just annihilate everybody. I got Cogsworth in uh, murder bot mode right now. He absolutely destroys. Uh, I got to get some sleeps. All right, Silky Paws. Well, thank you for coming in. I hope you have a great night tonight. Sorry, I got sidetracked there. Uh, I hope you had a great night. I hope you had a great stream. Thanks for hosting the channel. Appreciate it greatly. Have a great night. Uh, is there no fast travel in survival? There is no fast travel in survival unless you use a mod to override it. Uh, there is no saving. And you're like, Kidman, what? 
There's no saving. That's right. So if you go in here, the quick save and the save are disabled. Now, I'm in very hard mode because I've already played through survival mode various times. The old survival mode, the new survival mode, the new survival mode, and melee mode, and so on. Uh, but uh, it actually disables these two functions. It also disables the console. So you can't go in and utilize the console to quick travel past stuff and do all that stuff. So it is very, very difficult. Now, try it in melee mode. Now, in melee mode is even more insane, uh, but we absolutely crush it. Now, I find survival mode is the great search for beds because that's how you save. So you have to go out along the wasteland and look for a bed like in some building or in some back uh, town or wherever and use that bed to save your progress. Otherwise, if you die, you'll, you'll go back to wherever you last saved. Uh, which has happened to me many times. I think we had like 127 deaths, but I'm a little crazy in game too. So I'll just, I'll go rushing into a whole group of crazy peeps and, and see what happens, right? Uh, I like doing that a lot. I, I find, you know, the, I find uh, people get worried about dying in games. I try to go in there and just try to push my very limits of see what I can do in a game. And if I die, okay, cool. That's my That's my limit at my current character status, right? Uh, that's how I like to play. I like to go in there and get crazy. Now, as you can see up here, we've got some food. They're working some fruit in this uh, little diner that we built. Now, this is through the Homemaker uh, ex uh, homemaker uh, extension. Now, if you want to check out our Homemaker mod, if you want to go ahead and check out all the mods that I'm using, my mods will put it in the channel as well. Uh, so here we go, uh, right over here. Uh, lots and lots of meat fruit. Uh, now, we're going to go ahead and create a little lounge area for him here uh, real quick. I think we might have to get some more uh, cloth, though. How are we doing on cloth? Yeah, we should probably take a minute. Let's take a minute and get some cloth. Let's go ahead. Oh, not load. Let's go ahead and save. There we go. Save that sucker. Uh, and we need to go ahead and stop by, get some cloth. We'll get some... Uh, uh, we're going to get some uh, stuff. You know what I should do is I should grab my purified water and put that at Diamond City. Now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. All right, let's go here back here to Spectacle Island. Uh, we're going to grab some purified water, which is what I use for cash. Uh, and then we're going to go run it over there uh, and keep it going. Now, again, we're going to play some Fallout 4 tonight. We're going to play some uh, uh, No Man's Sky. And then uh, later on, we're going to play some Learn to Play. It's going to be pretty fun. Pretty fun. A learn to play action. I love to try new games and uh, try different stuff. I don't get as much time as I would like uh, to try a bunch of these games out. Uh, so I'm trying to do so. I'm trying to do more of that. Holy mackerel. Look at that. Seven th I forgot I had that much in there. Uh, 7,000. So I have 9,785 right there. You saw I just got 2,500 uh, from the last time. Uh, I don't cheat. I don't shortcut. I don't give myself unlimited stuff. I don't use any mods that uh, allow me to shortcut or go through the game. I like to earn my way through. Now, of course, again, they call me the Wasteland Tycoon because every single one of my settlements is like a business. That's right. They're making me money 24-7, including some of my very, very large mega builds like Norhagen Beach, the uh, beacon of the Wasteland, uh, which is currently uh, where all my overseers are who run all of my settlements. So I'm the overseers overseer that's right <laughs> as well as i make massive amount of money on purified water now of course here at spectacle island home of the mega vault and manufacturing uh which you can see my uh very very large vault there barely uh of course we've also got a bunch of purified water out there that's very difficult for you to see but that's okay i'm gonna go ahead and walk back in here real quick pop out of my power armor and we'll forward time a little bit so you guys can see my mega vault here. Dee, dee, dee. There we go. Uh, we'll forward some time action. And I'll let you guys, for those of you who haven't seen it before, check out my mega vault here. Now, I don't even think we're going to have enough time uh, for uh, doing the legendary museum or any of that stuff. I think we're going to run out of time and be playing a ton of Fallout 76. But we'll see how it goes. Now, bam. I've got this right here. There we go. It's going to shoot off that uh, flare. And it's a beautiful day. That's part of the Contraptions DLC. Uh, right over here is those weather-changing shells, which makes the weather clear, at least for a little while. Uh, and you guys can go ahead and check it out. Of course, rocking the Overseer's Guardian uh, as well. Oh, 500 kiss caps dealt uh, for those five retweets. Again, everybody, retweet. Host the channel. Get those kiss caps built out. I'm going to be giving away cash money. Cash money. Money in your pocket. I've been working very hard on it. Building up those sponsors, bringing you epic stuff here on the stream. 
Uh, you guys going to win Fallout 76 on my channel. That's right. You're going to win it uh, so you guys can play it. So here's how you do it. You go into your channel with that little button way up there in that upper right-hand corner. Uh, if you're on PC or on mobile, wherever you're at, uh, go up there and, of course, go to your channel, right? So you say go my channel, open in a new window, and then you go in your chat and you say slash host Kismet, K-I-S-M-E-T right there and it's right there at the top of the stream and of course that instantly gives you some kiss caps and if you do that every single time uh the kiss caps of course are for our contests and giveaways so you can uh win epic loot by building those up and of course using a ton of those on the thing that you want to try to win right and i've seen people win with just one kiss cap, but don't don't leave it to chance. Uh, you have the power right there. Now, you can also go as a team, as part of the Wasteland Tycoons, uh, go to the Twitter up there. My mods will throw that in the chat. You click that link. You hit uh, like. You hit that retweet. And for every five retweets, we give out 500 kiss caps. Now, of course, it also starts to stack. So if you get to 10 retweets, you get 1,000 kiss caps on top of the 500 you got already. And so on and so forth. It's kind of a team building exercise that we do here in the stream. It does help the stream as well. Uh, so you guys, of course, earning that up. Now, if you like to win sweet loot, I've literally given away hundreds of games worth thousands of dollars here in the stream. I've given away real life loot. I've given away Kismet t-shirts. I've given away Kismet loot drops where you get a massive amount of stuff from me, including Kismet candy bars as well. Uh, if you've never had a Kismet candy bar, ooh, they're so good. So good. So good. And of course, I'm going to be bringing a massive amount of that stuff to TwitchCon. My mods will all have uh, little loot drops to hand out to all you guys. It was cool. I was working on the loot drops. Uh, instead of just giving out just, uh, you know, kids cats and whatnot, just kind of uh, kind of in a, in a handed out stuff, uh, you'll actually have little separate loot drops, which I think is super cool. Uh, so again... Uh, show those sponsors some love too, by the way. All those people right there that uh, Josie just put in the chat. Uh, Nit Rado, uh, Fra uh, Fazer, of course, the maker of the Kismet Candy Bar. Nit Rado, who does our server hosting. Mighty Skins, who do amazing stuff like this. Check it out, bro. Check it out. I bought a cheap case and got this skin. Oh, man, it's so awesome. It's like a couple bucks, too. I mean, it's like the, the best way to uh, to do your thing because it's a vinyl sticker. So if you don't, you know, if you use it for, say, three months and you're like, hey, you know what? I want to put like a Halloween thing on there. Or I want to put my pets or my dog or whatever. That's why I think that's just nothing short of genius. Of course, Sticker You, of course, who do uh, all my stickers. They do tattoos and, of course, the kiss caps as well. Uh, they do a fantastic job on that. And, of course, Logo Tags, who is a new sponsor this year, who is doing our Wasteland Tycoon pin. Uh, which is right over here, which turned out freaking amazing, uh, which you can't really see it. It doesn't do it justice. But when you see it live at TwitchCon, it's actually huge. It's very much for you pin collectors out there. You definitely want to get the Wasteland Tycoon thing. I'll be wearing it on my Wasteland Tycoon outfit. Uh, you'll, uh, you'll have to hit, hunt us down for that one. Of course, all of you who have contributed to getting my mods at TwitchCon will get a Wasteland Tycoon pin as well because you're awesome. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Uh, big time. Uh, so yeah, right over here, you see that we have got a landing pad here. This is actually a working vertebrate landing pad uh, as well. We've got that going. Of course, this is how I make my money right here. Purified water from day one when I arrive at Sanctuary. Boom. I'm starting to put those down, making that money, utilizing them as cash. Instead of using bottle caps as cash, I use purified water as cash. And some people come in the stream and say, Kismet, you should try it with a mod that makes purified water worth one. I could still make a, a absolute fortune. Uh, you can make a fortune on mute fruit. Uh, you can make a fortune on uh, just uh, going around, super looting, taking all that stuff, selling that as well, uh, big time, uh, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff that you could do uh, to just make an insane amount of cash. Now, some people do it through jet. Some people do it through food or whatever it is. Uh, but there are a lot of ways uh, here in Fallout 4 to make crazy sums of dollar bills. Uh, let's go in here and talk to Myrna. You again. All right, got plenty of supplies. You've got plenty of supplies. I'll take a look. Sure. Here's what we got. All right, I'm gonna talk to Myrna here, and since we got lots of cash, let's go ahead and stock up on some serious stuff. Let's not forget to go to the uh, uh, to the castle as well. So we got that. We got some shotgun shells. Let's check that fusion core action. Uh, we're gonna stock up a little bit now. Of course. When you get to a certain part in the game, and you're like me, you're a Wasteland Tycoon, you can just literally go down and buy out every single thing they got. That's right. And you're like, Kismet, that's a lot of cash, bro. You've only got 5,000 caps, man. That's 9,000 over there. How are you going to pay for that? 
Well, uh, let me dazzle a little bit if you've never been to my stream before and show you how much money I make just in every few days in game. Boom. Over 146,000 caps right now in purified water. 146,000 right there. So I could buy out literally every vendor in the game right now. I can go around every single vendor and buy out every single thing that they have. And so can you. Uh, you can learn how to do it as well. If you want to see this playthrough from the very beginning, again, check out those YouTube videos. Uh, or if you have any questions on how I made my money, how I built it up, how I got myself going uh, about building settlements and that kind of stuff. Of course, it's going to help you a lot in Fallout 76. Of course, get yourself prepped uh, by playing a little bit of Fallout 4. Get that rust kind of off your uh, weapons and off your uh, gameplay. Uh, and get prepped and ready. Of course, I'll be bringing it to you live. I'll be showing you my collector's edition once it comes in. Uh, all of that fun stuff as well. Uh, now, what I do is I do a first trade, and then it does the math for me. Now, I used to have a calculated down to the penny using a spreadsheet, but now I don't do that because I realize that it just does the math for you. If you do a first trade, and then you go in and do a second trade just to get their caps. Now, I try to get close. But, you know, I don't sweat the small stuff. But if I wanted to be exact, I could because I could just use my ammo uh, to do so. But that's good enough. Now, you got to think of how much money that I have I've spent here at this location. This person literally has a million caps easily. I've spent at least a million caps. Now, I would like to have stats on how much money that you've given to each and every vendor, right? Like how much purified water has I given to her, right? How much stuff is How much of stuff have I bought from her? That kind of stuff. <laughs> I wish they had that in Fallout 76 where it would show you your stats, how long you were doing, how many things have you built, how many caps have you earned, how many caps have you spent. Very much like Fallout Shelter. I love that stats thing that it shows you, like, uh, you know, how many caps you've spent, how many uh, uh, vault dwellers you've had over the time and that kind of stuff. Uh, hopefully they add that kind of achievement system into Fallout 76. That would be my biggest uh, uh, suggestion for them. Hardware. We all right, let's talk to the girl to get some cloth. All right, now down here in Fallon's basement, the very unknown uh, thing as well uh, is uh, this right here. Uh, is the uh, uh, Becky Fallon. New clothes? Oh, yeah. I've got a few minutes to browse. Don't bother asking about the thread count. How's the thread count? <laughs> All right, right there, cloth and leather, leather. She has a shipment of that. Now, she has a little bit of other stuff as well. We'll just grab that while we're at it. Uh, sometimes she does have some cool stuff like mechanic outfits and whatnot. If you have specific stuff that you want to dress people up as, like, like longshoremen, you want them to have a baseball cap or maybe like a mining helmet, stuff like that. Interesting stuff uh, she has if you're trying to theme up your different uh, settlements as well. Uh, very, very fun to do that, to go in and, and really get all that going. Uh, all right, so we got her going, and again, we're going to go ahead and use our purified water here uh, and just dish that out uh, as well. And again, I just try to get close. I just guesstimate, right? Let's say about 1,000. There we go. And that leaves with 103, and then we can go in, dial it in again. Now, sometimes you don't have to really carry this much purified water around um, because uh, it makes it more difficult to dial it in very precisely. Uh, so usually I will bring a lot less, like 2,000 or something like that, uh, purified water, because I don't really need to carry 140,000 worth. Now, I've had 10, 20, 30,000 purified water at some point where I could literally just go buy out everybody in the wasteland. Where's my light? So far away from me. There we go. <laughs> I'm just a perfectionist when it comes to my stream. I see a little bit of blue screen uh, showing there, so I had to fix it. I had to fix it. Thick Nikki, great name. Thank you so much for dropping the dragon hammer, crushing that follow button, becoming part of the Wasteland Tycoons. Welcome to the stream. Also, uh, Air Jordan coming in. Oh, those are good shoes, by the way. Uh, thanks so much for dropping the dragon hammer, crushing that follow button, becoming part of the Wasteland Tycoons. Welcome, welcome. Uh, appreciate everybody being here tonight. Uh, Jared coming in with the host as well. Appreciate that. All right, so we got some cloth. We've got uh, the materials from her. General. We're going to go over here. We're going to get the materials from this dude, my my buddy, my pal, Are Arturo. To keep your load light? Uh -huh. I am, I am never miles. looking to keep my load light. I like to load up with just as much free loot as I can find because that's millions of caps. If you just went around and picked up all the loot 
That would be worth millions of caps just right there. All the stuff just laying around. When you go into an instance, all that stuff just laying around. I've literally picked up every single thing in the wasteland before and gone through every single instance and gone through everything and just picked it up, take it back to my settlement. And of course, then I can build a massive settlement. I can build stuff up. So they're making me money as well. So take that money, reinvest it in your settlement, and then they just make you money the whole rest of the game as well. I'm going to see if it works in Fallout 76. I'm going to see if I can do a Wasteland Tycoon run or kind of, uh, you know, adjust for that Wasteland Tycoon. Now, of course, it's going to be even more fun because we can all play together. Uh, that's going to be super fun. Uh, so again, if you want to play with me in Fallout 76, go to the Discord, discord.gg slash kismet. Uh, go into the Lurker chat. You'll see it there at the top. Uh, go ahead and click on that Lurker chat. You say, Kismet, I would like to be part of the Wasteland uh, Fallout or the Wasteland Tycoon 76 crew. Uh, you're welcome uh, to join us. Now, we have a whole bunch of information in the Fallout 76 crew area where you can go in and you can check out the latest videos, uh, things that we've seen. Uh, and, of course, uh, things about stats and uh, where to get into the beta and all that kind of cool stuff in there as well. Uh, some articles. Let's see what the latest thing in there was. Microtransactions, an article about uh, Fallout 76 from PC Gamer, uh, a guide to what's new in Fallout 76 directly from Bethesda. If you want to know that, again, if you see some more cool stuff that you think we should check out, feel free to let my mods know or just go in there and uh, let me know uh, in the lurker chat. We'll try to add it. We'll try to add it. That's part of that Fallout 76 info. Now, if it's like a playthrough or a spoiler or something like that, make sure to let us know because uh, uh, we don't want to be spoiling for people uh, if they so choose not to have it spoiled. Uh, all right, so we got that going. And then, of course, he's got aluminum, copper, and gears and screws and all that stuff. We're going to go ahead and do that. Then purified water. We own about 4K. And we'll get close. Do that uh, first trade and then second trade for the 7-Eleven, which is actually a convenience store in uh, California. Every time I see 7-Eleven, that's the first thing I think of. Going to 7-Eleven, get myself a Slurpee. Get myself a Slurpee or a suicide. Who is that? Put a one in the chat if you've ever done a suicide, by the way. Uh, a suicide is when you go in and you just start pressing all the different drinks and you just kind of mix those drinks together. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty not good. I've had a few of those that really upset my stomach before, uh, where I just like made the wrong combination. Uh, but it's fun to do sometimes. No fun to do that kind of crazy stuff. A Ashwada. All right. Oh, we got, a, we can't, we got a uh, forward time here. So let's go, let's go right here in this spot. So we could go in and we could sleep until nighttime, but we're just going to go ahead. What's up? Uh, we're just going to go ahead and sit right here. And then we're going to turn around. I don't think we can see, actually. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and forward time until the nighttime. Uh, so we can get Percy here, who is going to be our dude. Probably didn't need to go that long, but whatever. Uh-oh! Kingsport Lighthouse is under attack! We're going to be going back there in a minute, so that'll be handy. Uh, so you have your daytime vendor, and of course you have your nighttime vendor. And the great thing about uh, Diamond City, once I discovered this, it's pretty amazing, is the fact that uh, the nighttime and daytime vendors do not share inventories. Every conceivable good you can... I've got a few minutes to browse. There you are. There we go. All right, so again, I notice I can rebuy the same things, uh, shotgun shells and whatnot, fusion cores, and of course, he's got an entire uh, thing full of loot that I can go ahead and buy up. Uh, including that steel that we're going to need. Uh, and, of course, uh, all the other stuff as well. Right in there. There we go. And, again, we owe about 9000 No problem. We've got plenty. Now, the cool thing is, is while I'm doing this right now, dialing this in and spending all of this back at my settlements, they're off making me more money right now. So by the time I'm done spending this, they will have actually made all that money back plus more. Uh, if you do build up your settlements correctly. Now, I don't typically do it in every single settlement. Uh, I do it across kind of what I call the major settlements or the large settlements that are very easy to set up. Have it do a purified water or mute fruit or whatever you want to do uh, to make that make them dollar bills uh, and go from there. So let's go ahead and uh, good time to save just in case we crash here. And we're going to go ahead and jump over here to the lighthouse. We're getting attacked. Let's see what happens. Now, we do have a kill box already set up. Uh, so let's see who decides to be foolish enough to attack my settlements. Uh, you call them graveyards. Ah, Eternal does that, says Gwen. 
Yeah, I used to do that when I was young. I stopped doing that, though. I stopped doing it, but I did when I was young, and I tried a whole bunch of different ones. Like, you try to make a vanilla Coke, right? So you put it, like, in something that's, like, vanilla, like, cream soda, and then you put it with Coke, and you mix it together. My daughters do that, too, so I think it's funny. Uh, but sometimes it really does. It actually is. Killbox doing his job. Now normally I'd have a kill box on that side. Somebody in the base there. She comes out here in the open. Killbox is going to take care of her. Find him. Whoa. Now, see, I'm purposely trying to draw him up to the kill box. How's it going there, Rust Devil? How about I shoot you in the face? Bye bye. Bring in the Reaper. Kismet's on a warpath today. What else we got? Somebody over here? Now, you don't have to shoot robots in the head, by the way. Like, if you shot them in the leg, it's just as good. Look at that, a lot of damage I did. Because... Sick. Good job! Mysterious Stranger backing me up. Uh, so yeah, it's just as good to shoot them in the leg that is in the head because they're not humanoid. Uh, they are a robot. Look at all this free loot. I love me some sweet loot. Now you're going, Kesmet, why is everybody yellow? Well, this is a mod that I added, which I think should have been in the original game. The ability to turn on the fact that you can find out where the heck your uh, mobs went so you can find your loot, right? Because sometimes you'll lose your loot because you weren't the one that killed them. Maybe it was a kill box. Maybe it was uh, one of your settlers and you don't know where all your loot is. Uh, more people up there. Oh, something of bolstering there. Let's go check that out. Let's go check it out. Uh, let's see. Apparel. I think that was. Yes, right here. Uh, metal armor of bolstering for our legendary museum. For later on. Or maybe not at all. We'll see how much time we have uh, to get that done. Oh, some supermans. I hear you over there, bro. How about I just come over there and say hello to you with my little shotgun? How you doing there? Oh, he's almost dead. I don't even need to. I just like, boom. Super mutants. Anybody else? Nope. Good. All right. Look at all this free loot just laying around. It's like free loot delivery. Uh, they show up. Now, the next thing we're actually going to work on is the kill boxes uh, up here. So they'll be highly more effective uh, next time uh, when these crazy peeps try to attack my settlements like a bunch of crazies. All right. Now, I'm also overburdened because I bought all of that gear. And, of course, I'm picking up all of this stuff as well. Uh, and we'll go ahead and take all this stuff and put it in the workbench as well. And we have all that purified water, which I should have left. It just dawned on me again that I should have left it back there at uh, Diamond City. I always forget, because that's usually the place I jump to because it has the most vendors and close proximity other than my actual vendors at my location. 
Uh, now, if you're going to have a main location, you want to have all of that stuff fairly close together. Usually, I have my vendors right next to wherever my main uh, room is and whatnot, uh, which is a great way to do that. Now, I try not to AoE mobs that are close to my peeps. Otherwise, I accidentally kill my... That Moo Moo is always up to something crazy. Uh, otherwise, I accidentally killed my own settlers, so I try to go easy on that. I think we got everybody over here, and there was one down over here. I just think there was a couple over here. Lots of sweet loot. Uh, and get up here as well. Yeah, lots of people doing that uh, craziness, doing those suicides. All right. No, I don't want to take it all. Uh, all right, so we'll go ahead and put this purified water in here and all this other stuff. We hit T to drop that in there. Now, we also did pick up a bunch of this other loot. Let's go ahead and drop that in there. Like so. And you're like, Kevin, you're supposed to take that back to your mega sorter. Yeah, I will eventually. Right now, we're going to go ahead and get that going on. Like so. Oh. All righty. Got that going on. Man, it's foggy. Very foggy here. Okay, let's get back to it. Uh, so we've got our stairwell and our ladders and whatnot in uh, place. We'll go ahead and remove some of the scaffolding here. We no longer need that. And now we have a little bit of cloth, so we can uh, make ourselves a little bit of a lounge here. We need some more cloth. We can grab it elsewhere. Workbench, just so I can run up here faster. All right. Veta, veta, nice. We are working our way through here. Taking all these out. I should go down a couple. A couple of these at a time. There we go. And then I like to uh, take one out and try to grab it on the way down. It's kind of fun. Kind of fun. All right, there we go. Now we've got that going. We've got the house blocked off so we can have our moo-moos in there. Hopefully they don't get wiped out. Uh, and we've kind of scrapped everything that we can kind of scrap in this area. Uh, sometimes you can try to run around and see if you missed anything. Like I missed a little bit of a bush there. Oh, there it is. And get rid of that. Now I do have a mod that allows me to remove some of the extra stuff. Uh, like bricks and all this other kind of random trash on the ground uh, like these bushes sometimes you roll over them once you don't see them you come back next time uh, you couldn't take it out before but this time you can uh, just by luck of finding with that magic spot uh, all right looking good there let's go ahead and take our elevator again up to the top like so Going up. Okay, so again, back to what we we're doing here. We're just gonna build them a little bit of a lounge here. Now, of course, the happiness ba the happiness of your people is based on which amenities that you give them, right? Of course, if you have food and water, that's gonna bring the happiness up. Uh, if you have that defense uh, as well, and of course, enough beds for everybody, uh, that's gonna help as well. Uh, now, we're gonna go ahead and just do just a kind of a basic a little area here. A little lounge for them to hang out. Actually, I feel like using these rounded ones. Let's do another, like, half uh, circle rounded. Actually, let's do something more like the diner. Yeah, let's use the benches. Something like that. 
Which is kind of funny because we don't need cloth for these. There we go. Nice place for them to come in and lounge out. Let's just go with something simple like that. Uh, then we'll come out here and we're going to go ahead and use our uh, chairs out here. I think yeah, we have any on that side. Go back this way. Maybe a little picnic table. Like so. It's a place for them to hang out. Outside here. Enjoy the night air. Uh, and then maybe a little bit of kind of outside stuff. Must have went past it. Must have went past it. I know we put it down before. Here's our chairs. Oh, maybe you know what? I haven't, maybe I haven't unlocked that in my main thing yet. Huh. That's okay. We can go ahead and use the Homemaker uh, mod for that. Uh, let's see. Furniture. And we can go in. These are various different seats. I got a lot of cool uh, different ones in here. You can use these like Institute chairs. All right. So we'll put some Institute chairs in. like that uh, I think that's good now there's a whole bunch of other stuff in here you can put memory loungers and all sorts of neat stuff uh, from there as well we can also use the uh, kind of Institute bench like that a lot of cool stuff in this uh, particular uh, mod various different couches and whatnot I think somewhere in here there was a uh, the outside uh, furniture Surfaces, so fixtures, lots of neat stuff in there. I'm just experimenting now. I'm just looking. Different beds. Oh, look at these institute beds. Oh, we might have to use that in our next one. Might have to use those in the next one. Bunch of things there. Uh, Protectron pod, shelving. Display box. Different shelving. All right. Lots of cool stuff in there. All right. Well, that's good enough. We'll go with those Institute chairs. That's pretty cool because we need to use some of this cloth uh, for our actual uh, location here. We also need to set up our uh, defense room. This is our security room where we're going to go ahead and put in uh, some defenses. And we're just going to use some uh, regular machine guns here. Uh, on that side, and of course, one here and one there. So as they come through the door and they see these ones, they start shooting these. The other ones from the other side going to crossfire and get them there. Now, we're also going to have another internal lounge over here uh, with a bit different stuff. So we're going to have some couches uh, and whatnot, as I like to do. I like to create you know, like a little bit of a space for them to hang out. Then you want to walk around behind there and make sure that you can get around there. I can. Very nice. Or you can put it up against the wall uh, as well, which I typically don't like to do. I don't like to put it up against the wall unless it's like a bed or something because the beds uh, actually uh, serve a good purpose. Now, the other thing is I wish the uh, vault kit, all the furniture and stuff was in its own thing so you don't have to scroll all the way to the end every time because uh, that, uh, that gets very tedious after a while. Or even better uh, would be the ability, of course, to favorite stuff. Uh, to favorite certain furniture or building pieces that you use uh, quite often. Yeah, I'm turning that wind noise down just a little bit. Uh, there we go. Eyes of March saying, hey, Kesmet, mods, uh, and chat mates, hope you're all doing well today. Doing awesome. Professor Keenbean uh, saying, hey, in the chat. Hey, Professor Keenbean, great to see uh, you and Eyes of March uh, in the chat. You guys get hyped for Fallout 76. I'm so waiting. I'm so ready. I get my uh, Fallout uh, 76 Xbox on Monday. And, of course, I'll unbox it uh, and make a video for you guys, of course, uh, as well. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Going to be fun. Going to be fun. Uh, all right. And then over here, we'll go ahead and just put some random chairs. We can do about five more chairs. And again, I feel like just doing a little bit of this kind of rounded, rounded action like that. 
Very nice. Uh, nice little lounge for him. Of course, we could really get down and dirty. We could really embellish the heck out of it if we so chose. Uh, now, the next thing, of course, I need to do is I need to go in and make some more beds. We're right now at uh, eight beds. Uh, and we have kind of built a big area back here for their beds to be. Uh, we've also put some uh, in uh, another room, I believe. Where is our eight beds? Our eight beds are hiding somewhere. Not up here. <laughs> I was like, where did I? Oh, they're inside the house. That's right. They're inside the house down there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and uh, put down some bunks like so. Now, one of the problems, of course, with this, this is called Snap Beds, an incredibly great mod. Uh, but it starts to go into the wall, right? So you want to just go a little bit, see if it starts going into the wall, and then, of course, readjust for a little bit. Now, I like it to be up against the wall so it takes less space, uh, but they actually do snap together, which is pretty awesome. And then we'll go ahead and put in a gap right here, like so. Now, of course, you can also be counting as you're going. So there's two, four, six, eight. And then, of course, you got ten, then two, four, Oops, two, four, six, eight, ten. So there's literally 20 worth of it. And that's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, that's a lot of peeps right there. Now, of course, we want to aim for about 24. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and put some against this back wall as well. Uh, I have a feeling that eventually this settlement will be quite a large one. So there's 22, 24, 26. That should be way more than enough. Now, again, we have the other one way down at the bottom in the actual house, uh, which is not very secure down there. So we're going to go ahead and fly our way down. Sorry. Of all, there's one guy standing there. One guy out of all the places. Now, again, right here, we have these uh, beds in here. We're going to go ahead and take those out. Much easier to take them out, of course, during the daytime when they're not sleeping in them. And those were just temporary while we're getting everything set up uh like so there we go very nice now of course we can reuse uh all of that uh upstairs because we stored it in the workbench we didn't scrap it scrapping it makes you lose a lot of resources uh which is a bummer so i typically store it and then i can rebuild it elsewhere it took me a long time to learn that by the way that you could do that i was actually like at the very beginning of the game i would pick up one piece of uh of a uh, fence and then I would walk it into position and then put it. And then I'd go back and get another piece of fence and walk it over and then put it. It took a long, long time. Uh, Josie coming in with the bits, testing those bits. Those bits seem to be working. They seem to be working there. There they go. Yep, yep. I think somebody put some bits in there earlier, didn't they? I think they did. I can't remember. I can't remember. I think it was the hosting. Yeah, it was the hosting that knocked it down. By the way, my bits are updated uh, now. Uh, the bit boss is updated. It's called the hype boss now. Uh, you can actually go in. If you host, it, it breaks the, it knocks down the bit boss. If you uh, follow, if you subscribe, if you do all of those things, they also affect the bit boss as well. And we're going to be having something new come uh, for the bit boss very, very soon. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Uh, if you are the bit boss at the end of the night. And I will get into that when we're ready for that. But right now, we are focused on our settlement here. Let's get in here. Now, we have enough for nine right now, so we're definitely going to have to get some more cloth. And which is funny, because in most playthroughs, cloth is the thing you have the most of, usually. You have just an insane amount of cloth. Uh, now, I'm also going to go see if, uh, if my... Uh, Spectacle Island is somehow holding all of the cloth uh, somewhere uh, that we don't know. So we're going to go look. We're going to go see. Ah, uh, I wanted to see the hammer. Uh, is Twitch lagging on subs? Uh, I don't know. I don't see no subs in so far. Did you try to uh, re-up it? Want to see the hammer? See if it plays it. Did I click it? There we go. There's the hammer from Thicky Nicky coming in to hitting that follow button. There you go. A little hammer action. There it is twice, because I clicked it twice. Uh, there we go. Uh, all right, so let's go check on our thing down here. 
uh, to see if it's working properly. I feel like we bought a bunch of resources. Now look at this gigantic mess that it made. Now sometimes this will happen. You'll come back here and there'll be just an absolute gigantic mess. Of course, we've let this build up over time. And again, you can see that I have a fence on there to try to pre prevent it from going over the side. But because sometimes the stuff loads before that, this starts to happen over time. Hopefully they fix this in Fallout 76 because this does get annoying not to go in here and pick all this up. If it was working properly, it definitely would not do that at all now you also want to be careful that you don't accidentally take stuff out of uh, your benches uh, that you're using to sort I've done that by accident and then I'm like uh oh what did I take out of there I don't even remember I don't even remember taking it out of there we're gonna go through here grab the concrete like so just clean do a little bit of cleanup for you OCD peeps there well, I guess the last couple times you played, you left that there, and it's been driving me crazy. You've been driving me crazy, Kismet. Pick that stuff up. All right, I got your back. I got your back. I'm going to pick it up uh, just for you guys. There we go. Now, the funny thing is, the reason why this stuff is everywhere uh, is because of this right here. I have it turned up very, very fast, as you can see. You can see it's going by very, very fast. Now, concrete... It's one of those things. I have a mass amount of concrete. I have a hundred. I have fifteen a hundred. So that's fifteen hundred concrete that's being converted through there. Uh, so what happens is again uh, when you're loading in, it loads stuff out of order. Now it should never reach way over here. That's just basically firing it out. Uh, and it's hitting the wall and ending up over here. It might even be underneath the vault too. Uh, we can go check that out at some point. But as you can see, it is making a lot of all of this stuff. And sometimes that's a tendency to end up on the floor. Especially concrete for some reason. It's because it comes out in, in like three at a time. So it, uh, it has a tendency to launch all over the place. Which I find hilarious. Those little, little game quirks, you know. There's a lot of game quirks in just about every game. Uh, little things like this where I kind of let it go for a while and then I'll come back and pick it all up at once instead of just you know doing it willy-nilly from time to time and again you're gonna find it all over the place around do a little bit of cleanup oh, it's way over here in the corner way over here in the corner as well because uh, this is also converting this stuff Oh, a little bit of ceramic up there. Over here. Wood up there. And again, more concrete to convert. Maybe I should have this drop into one of those hoppers. Maybe that will cure this problem. I find the hoppers work fairly good uh, to kind of reorient your stuff. If you're having this kind of problem where stuff's not, you know, where it's falling off and whatnot, you can have it run up into a hopper and then fall in the hopper uh, and then has a tendency to uh, stay organized. Oh, look at all this stuff under here. Again, I'm out of the workbench right now and just hitting E to collect all this stuff. I'm crouching down underneath there to find what we can get. And we get up, up here. What a mess. What a humongous mess. But it's not cloth down there, though. So we know it's not. That's what's not messing up our cloth. Right there. Uh, all right. That recycler is empty. And this one's empty. That means everything's kind of gone through. Uh, those recyclers. And, of course, this one over here is never, ever empty. Because it's always converting stuff. As you can see. But we're going to go in and see if it has any shipments uh, or anything like that. We'll go ahead and look inside there. Does it have any shipments of cloth or anything like that? It doesn't look like it. Uh, let's see. Anything in here with cloth? Nope. Noops. So, yeah, it's going to be doing that concrete for a long time. 
Now, of course, the best way to do this, by the way, uh, is to uh, actually stand here for a while and just let it convert. Oh, look how much stuff it still has to do. Uh, is just to let it sit here and convert stuff. So you just leave your character here. You save. You get into a safe spot, like way up on the top of your settlement. Uh, you got your Kismet kill boxes, of course, watching out for you. Uh, and then you just AFK. And then you come back. And then all your stuff is converted, so you don't have to do it manually yourself. Also, this is also sorting all of my stuff. Uh, as you can see over here, it's sorting all of my workbench for me, so I don't have to sort it, which is which is amazing. This is amazing, which I really, really like. Uh, all right, so we got that. Let's pick up a few more things just laying around here. Just to try to tidy up a little bit here. A little tidying up today. Different uh, mods. We've got folders that end up on the tra on the floor. Anything else? No, we're looking good. Uh, looking good. Now, what to do with all this stuff that I have on me now? All the concrete on me, I don't want to put back in there again, of course. Uh, or it'll end up on the floor, maybe. Uh, I'll just put it back in the workbench manually. I go in here, I hit T, drop it back in the workbench, uh, and now it should be fine. Should be fine, because uh, it'll just stay in the workbench now. Uh, so let's go ahead and save that cleanup. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, go up here. And we are going to buy out some loot. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for hanging out here. Kismet, are raw materials more valuable than junk? Uh, if you are a builder like me, they are. Uh, the raw... Look, actually, some of it made it up here. Look at this. That's funny. Uh, look at this okay. mess. You gotta take things one day at a time. I got time. 20 people here and nobody cleaned up this mess. What's the deal? Where's, uh, where's Cogsworth? He would have cleaned that up for me. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, do manufacturing, right? And one of the big oversights, I think, of the Contraptions DLC is not to give you a recycler. Now, I'm using a yeah, mod called mod Manufacturing Monday. Extended. So I can have it where it takes the raw resource or takes the junk and converts it into raw resources. And you're like, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to take the junk and convert it into raw resource. Why don't you just have the junk go into the uh, manufacturing uh, and then uh, go from there? Well, the problem is, is then you're going to have other resources that are not necessar necessarily part of the manufacturing that you're trying to do. Great example is if you're over here trying to do uh, ammo, like in my case, I do 308 ammo. If you're trying to do ammo, it requires uh, different stuff. I don't know why that 556 five, rounds in there. Uh, so it takes copper, fertilizer, and lead. That's what it's going to grab out of the uh, workbench. Actually, I only need one of those fertilizers in there. You only need one in the thing that pulls it out. Uh, so this component extractor is going to pull just the raw components and put it in here. If I pull the junk out of there, then it's going to put it in there and it's going to have some extra ceramic or extra whatever it doesn't need. And it's going to be stuck in that uh, particular thing there, right? You can see there's some fertilizer here. It's going to be actually stuck in that uh, manufacturing, which is what I don't want to happen because I may want to be doing ammo and armor at the same time, right? And this will require a certain resource. That will require a different resource, hopefully, depending on what you're building. Uh, sometimes they do overlap. Uh, but, of course, I also have a contraption that allows me to pull it back out using vacuum hoppers. Like right here, this vacuum hopper will pull everything out of the armor workbench and then rerun it back into the workshop, uh, workshop storage. And that's also part of manufacturing extended. I strongly recommend uh, that mod. Incredibly great. If you want to get a link to it, I have a whole list of mods. You can find it in there. Click that link. Try it in your next playthrough. Super fun. Super fun as well. Uh, there you go. It always happens to me. I broke it. Sorry if you broke it, Professor King. Close enough. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so I find that all materials are useful, uh, Eve 6. I do find them incredibly useful. Of course, that's how I make these mega builds. That's how I make all this stuff. I do not just, you know, give myself an unlimited amount of stuff. I go in and actually earn my way to this point And then, of course, keep going beyond and beyond and beyond uh, in those mega builds. All right, look, it's doing it already. Look, throwing those up over there. See, see how it puts a whole bunch of out at the same time? There's like three of them out at the same time and then they get a little awkward. Hopefully they fixed all that stuff too. Hopefully they fixed it. All right, let's go run up here. I'm not in my power armor right now. 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and run up here. Uh, right here. We're gonna go ahead and check that workbench again. Now, remember how I said that while I was gone, they were busy working? Well, guess what? Look, they just made another 1,364 uh, purified water right here. I don't even remember what I did with my other purified water. I think I left it uh, back there at Norhagen. Uh, but now we can go ahead and we can talk to people. Now, Trader Riley okay. here. Got some stuff for sale. Care to have a look? Let's see. Sure. Let me show you what I've got. Now, Trader Riley here is what's known as a legendary vendor. You find her around the way. Now, in every single playthrough I've ever done, except for this one, uh, she is bugged out and never showed up. Uh, at the settlement I told her to go to. Now, I'm actually, I actually added the mod, which is the Great Fixer mod for Fallout 4 uh, in this particular playthrough, and apparently it fixes those legendary vendors so they actually make it to your location. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and buy out all of this stuff as well, and it will break it down for me automatically. Uh, though, if you don't want it to break it down, or because when it pulls that stuff out of there, it's actually out of the workbench. So then it's processing it, and then once it's done processing, and then it puts it back in the workbench. But if you don't want it to do that, you can actually just take it and put it on you, and you'll be just fine. So there we go, 21,000. Let's just go ahead and get close. There we go. And then, uh, actually, let's invest in her. There we go. Uh, and then if you if you invest in her and then try to do another trade, uh, sometimes it gets really awkward, it, like it doesn't come out right. Right? But sometimes it does. There we go. Got it that time. Now, once I invested in her, then she'll have more caps every single time. Uh, she's also my general vendor as well. So, if we go in and we forward time... Just looking to trade a little. Sure. Actually, I'm looking to get you out of my chair. We go in the workbench, tell her to walk over there. You'll, she'll then get out of my chair. I used to be scared of super mutants, but we taught them a lesson this time. We sure did. We sure did. All right, so we're going to go ahead and forward time so these vendors show up again. Uh, and we're going to get it going. Kevin, since you have the ammo too, uh, have you tuned, uh, turned the Overseer's Guardian into an LMG? It's a weapon of pure destruction. Uh, no, I have not. I, uh, I turn the, uh, Overseer's Guardian into a kind of hip fire close weapon, but I can still snipe from very, very far away. Uh, let's go ahead and talk to her again. Excuse me. Got some stuff for sale. Care to have a look? Sure. Let me show you what I've got. Now, see, I bought out all of her stuff there. Uh, let's go ahead and go forward by a little bit more. So let's go a couple hours. There we go. Hey. Looking to trade? Sure. Let me show you what I've got. Oh, so again, I took out all of her caps and all that stuff uh, and got her uh, transfer. That actually tells us also, by the way, that she's not working as a separate vendor. That she's working as the primary vendor for that particular thing. Uh, let's get back in here. Oh, got to take my fusion core out. Very bad. Very bad. Is Riley found just outside Vault 88? Actually, she walks between uh, two areas. Uh, typically, she walks between the fish uh, packing plant, which is over here somewhere. Uh, where are you hiding, fish packing plant? It's usually up against the edge here. Nope, nope, nope. Huh, it's usually right up against the sedge here. Drawing a blank on it right now. But usually you want to go between Vault 81 and that fish packing plant. So I can find out, remember where it's at. Brain freeze. Now I have sleep apnea, so if I forget something, just roll with it. There we go, four leaf fish, fish packing plant right there. I knew it was somewhere there. Uh, so she walks between here and uh, Vault 81. She goes typically back and forth between there. Now, of course, once you uh, once you ask her, say, hey, be part of my crew, uh, and then you can send her wherever you want to go, and she actually works now. Uh, she was, she's was she been broken forever uh, and if you play through a standard playthrough. Uh, there we go. There's actually some places we haven't been yet either. I <laughs> haven't been to the town at the end there or nothing. Or nothing. All right, so we got some uh, resources there. Where else do we want to go for cloth? Uh, I think we want to go over here and, and visit our peeps at Abernathy Farm. 
Let's go over there and take a little peek at that mega build while we're at it, too. Uh, there we go. So, yeah, uh, between 81 and the fish packing plant. There we go. Uh, dee, 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 dee. Yeah, oh, I'll show you my Overseer's Guardian build here in just a second. Uh, you quit playing it. What'd you quit playing? Fallout 4? Or what? Uh, I have a problem, Kesmet. I did all of the newer missions on Fallout 4 and then gave it some very hard missions. Eventually, I ran out of good guns and ammunition, and now my game is stuck uh, in a no-money, no-gun, good-gun, no-ammunition mode where all my missions have enemies who shot me and take no damage from my weapons. Oh, no, that is a bummer. That is a bummer. Sounds like you need to go and super loot. Uh, you need to super loot those areas that, uh, that doesn't have a lot of enemies. Uh, which are uh, places that you have already visited uh, that haven't respawned. You can go back in there if you left a bunch of loot behind uh, and use that money to build your stuff back up again. Uh, also, uh, if you have Sanctuary, you can go ahead and be like me, and I'll go run to Sanctuary and show you how I built it up. Of course, we have a mega build here at uh, Abernathy Farm. Uh, so you can go in, of course, put down purified water. Uh, if you've got the resources, if you don't have the resources, again, go those little areas, grab what you can. Uh, try to get yourself some resources to make a purified water. Uh, you only really need to start with one, and then, of course, then do two, then do four, then eight, 16, so on and so forth. Uh, and you'll be making millions of caps. Uh, right now, we're looking for somebody very, very specific, uh, the vendor over here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. Oops. You're just falling from the sky. Uh, we're going to hit that bell, and we are going to look for our girl. She's around here somewhere. There she is. What do you need? Excuse me. Looking to make a deal? Now, I know some of All you are right. thinking, Kesmet, why is everybody uh, red? Uh, that is because uh, they are uh, being seen through the eyes of my, uh, my targeting hut. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get everything that she's got here. Uh, she should have a shipment of cloth, and when she does... Right there. Uh, that is what I'm looking for from her. But I might as well buy all the rest of the stuff while I'm here uh, as well. And if we have some purified water, we can go ahead and drop that on there. That's going to take a lot of that off of there. Uh, as well as I could just go ahead and use my caps uh, if I wanted to buy anything else. Um, but I owe her 1300 That's fine. Uh, you will find that I do not uh, save up my caps, like try to get 10,000 or 100,000 or a million caps because I use my caps. There's no reason to save them up. I mean, that's what the whole purpose of having money is to spend it on something that you need. Uh, that's the point of it, not just to have the money. The money is the is only the in-between part. Uh, so again, I uh, if you want to see a tour of Abernathy Farm here, I've done tours many times here. Uh, you'll check out that YouTube check out the youtubers now actually at the end of this playthrough i will go through and actually uh do a uh, uh do a tour of all of them uh and make a video from that as well all right so let's go ahead and walk over here to sanctuary just real quick of course you can also see my uh, mega vault uh, over there at Red Rocket. Those guys are living good over there. Look at that. Look at that vault over there. Very nice. Up on the top of Red Rocket. Now, over here at Sanctuary, we have another uh, mod called Sim Settlements, which is incredibly great, by the way. Uh, the Overseer's Guardian is great, but the Spray and Spray is a must. Uh, please don't kill yourself. I love the Spray and Pray. Usually, I give it to my companions once I have the ability for them not to hit me with it. Uh, the Spray and Prey is very fun. I've actually been using a combat shotgun, which is very similar to the Spray and Prey, which does, like, AoE damage, uh, in this, uh, playthrough. Uh, lots and lots of fun. As you can see here, we've got a build at Sanctuary, uh, that's up on the second level. But, of course, the main thing that you want to see, uh, over here, uh, I do make a lot of money. About 10,000 to 20,000 very early in the game, level 5, level 10, by building up my purified water. If, you're having, if you have a shortage of funds, here's what you got. Oh, Pluto coming in. I like your Pluto. Uh, uh, Pluto's one of my favorite peeps of Twitch, by the way. You know why? Because he just is who he is, right? He doesn't try to act like anybody else. He doesn't try to act like he's Mr. Big Stuff. Uh, he loves to, you know, escape rooms and doing his thing. Uh, so there you go. Gwen Stefani. How'd you know? How'd you know she was Gwen Stefani? Uh-oh, your secret's out, Gwen. Uh, you will do that, Sinashka. Yeah, so look at this. As I build 
Uh, as I go along very early in the game, I make one purified water, right? Then I go around, collect a bunch of materials. I also take that water and I sell the excess water to the vendors. And then I buy enough resources to get a second water purifier. Then I let that run, get that purified water, the excess, and sell that, get more resources. Then I've got four, then I've got eight, then I've got 16. And before you know it, you're making a thousand purified water here at... Uh, at Sanctuary, and of course, that lasts for your entire rest of your game. Now, also, it's very difficult to find ammo very early in the game. Um, what you want to do, of course, is use that scrounger. Notice I've got it on four. Usually, I at least put one point in there. The reason why is because that lasts you the whole rest of the game. I like any perk that gives me a bonus the whole rest of the game. So I'll do that with Fortune Finder and Scrounger very early on. I'll put one in each, and then I will have that for the whole rest of the game. And if later on I feel like upping it some more, I will up it some more. Uh, like in the case, I've upped it all the way now because, of course, I need uh, 308 ammo, which is uh, very commonly I use for my Overseer's Guardian. Now, if you'd like to see how I've got my Overseer's Guardian uh, set up, by the way, uh, I forgot to tell you guys here at the top of stream, but somebody may ha have his very own Overseer's Guardian, real-life Overseer's Guardian, uh, that I'm going to show you here on stream uh, if it does arrive. We'll see. We'll see. It's still up in the air. I have uh, tried to get it done before, but I will be at TwitchCon dressed up as the Wasteland Tycoon, uh, of course, walking around with the Overseer's Guardian, of course, uh, you know, my favorite weapon in the game. Uh, and again, my Overseer's Guardian is set up as such. Uh, my Overseer's Guardian here is set for the 308 receiver, uh, the long ported barrel, the recoil compensating stock, the large quick eject mag, the reflex sight. Notice I do not have a ranged. Uh, a lot of people use the ranged on the Overseer's Guardian, which is fine, but I do not because I also like to hip fire. So if I want to snipe people from really far away, I can do so. All I got to do is put that little green dot on your forehead, I take the head clean off. Especially early in the game, this game, this gun is so OP. Uh, early in the game, you're one-shotting people, even if you're in survival mode, even if you're in the hardest mode. Uh, very early in the game, you do wipe them out. Now, I have mods that actually increase the uh, difficulty of the mods, so you can't one-shot them later in game. Uh, so uh, it will also make it harder and harder. So the Overseer's Guardian becomes less and less effective uh, the higher you go up. And, of course, especially in Far Harbor, where uh, mobs do not take a lot of damage uh, from the Overseer's Guardian. So you got to use other things like combat shotguns and uh, other weapons, uh, energy weapons and whatnot. Uh, but also the muzzle break. And, of course, it does 188 damage per shot because it shoots two projectiles at once. Want to see me do 1,000 damage in the same exact spot? You ready? Be watching. I'm going to do it right here. Ready? One, two. Three, four, five. There's a thousand damage I just did. Thousand damage. Right there. And that's what's so great about the Overseer's Guardian is when you have it built up, the recoil is very, very fast. Of course, the, the rate of fire is very, very high. And of course, it's shooting two projectiles at the same time. And if you're holding down your aim, you're also shooting it in the same exact position. Uh, very, very great weapon. Uh, my favorite weapon in the entire game. Even though there are other weapons that do more damage, uh, like the big boy, which shoots two nukes, and that kind of stuff, I find of a best all-around weapon is the Overseer's Guardian. So, that's my uh, take on it. So, there you go. Uh, I sure wouldn't be called that. There you go. I tried, says Morty. There you go, Morty. Uh, does it help having artillery? Do they drop more shells? Uh, well, the more artillery you have, the bigger uh, of an area that you can use your artillery. Uh, I don't know if it does more uh, artillery shots. I feels like it does. Uh, sometimes it'll shoot just once or twice. Sometimes it'll shoot three or four times. Uh, I try to put uh, artillery in every single settlement as I go across the wasteland. So as I'm kind of creating my net of settlements here, I still need to fix that Grey Garden link. See, I've got a double link there. See, I've got a link. There, and I got a link here. I got a triple link. And one that goes way over here and probably goes off into over there. I don't know what's up with that, but we can definitely uh, need to fix that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I think that's linked between there and there. Uh, we got to have all that linked together to use it. Now, what we're working on right now is the lighthouse uh, over here. Did anybody need any help? No. All right. Uh, we're working on the lighthouse over here. We're trying to build up. Look, we haven't even been over here. I haven't been to the robotics uh, disposal ground in this playthrough. Now, I've been to everywhere in the game before. Uh, as I've played through again, I've played over 2,500 hours uh, here on stream. There we go. 
There you go. Kids, will you stay on the Xbox playthrough of 76 or go back to PC ASP? Uh, ASAP. I will go to the back to the PC ASAP. Why? Because my PC is incredibly robust. Uh, and my Xbox, I'll probably just let my kids play. Uh, they'll play Minecraft on it and all that kind of stuff. Now, if people want me to specifically play on Xbox, if there's like a barrier, which I seriously doubt, between uh, people who are on Xbox and PC. Whoa! Deathclaw! So I like to just let them kill the other guys, and then whoever wins, I kill the one who wins. Deathclaw fell in the water. Gives him a kill box doing his job. Love the kill box. Deathclaw is still down there. Rust Devil getting smoked by the kill box. Look how far the kill box is. Way over there. Dead. Oh, look at you, mister. I'm going to drag him out of there. Now, trick is to drag him out if you want to have some fun. Or to get the high ground on him. Just smoke him with the Overseer's Guardian. Where are you going, my loot? Back here. Now, normally I would grab everything they got, but I'm just going to go ahead and grab a little bit. You're like, Kismet, look out, you're going to drown. Well, I have the uh, perk for uh, being underwater. Uh, I don't take any radiation uh, damage as well as I don't drown. Uh, you can't actually drown in your power armor. I have proven it uh, here on the stream before. <laughs> uh, in an obvious way of dying while underground or underwater. So uh, look out for that. And of course, we've got uh, the uh, Automatron DLC here. Uh, right here, a whole bunch of bots attacking us. I love when the bots attack me because it just gives you a mass amount of resources. Somebody else up there causing trouble while I'm over here getting the loot. This person's floating away. Now I'm just grabbing the ammo. Uh, I do like to stuck. Oh, look, it's a death claw. Sucker! Use my jetpack there. So I draw. I drew him out. Where he, of course he get hit by the kill box from way over there. Uh, wiped him out. This spot right here just constantly respawns every single time you come here. Uh, we're going to build another kill box up a bit higher. Uh, give it a better advantage as well. And, of course, we're overburdened, so we need to get up here uh, where we can put this stuff. Now, instead of running all the way up uh, into there, all the way to the workbench, uh, a smart thing to do is to put uh, a uh, uh, access to your workbench at this level. All right, so you can go in. And make yourself a nice little crafting station once you get to that part in your stats. And, of course, the thing, my favorite, is this little tiny stove. It takes very little amount of resources. Gives you access to all of your stuff. Well, there's 10,000 purified water in there. 10,000. All right, we'll drop all this stuff in here because we're overburdened. We're going to hit T to drop all that uh, stuff that we bought uh, in there as well. Uh, we're looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and make our way up into the settlement. Now this time, instead of uh, instead of taking the elevator or instead of taking this up here every time, we're going to go ahead and change it. So every time we teleport to this particular location, we will arrive in the exact spot that we want to. So if we wanted to watch the action of the kill box wiping stuff out or whatnot, uh, we could go all the way up here to the top and arrive where we want. Uh, thank you so much to uh, Creepies uh, coming in, dropping the Dragon Hammer, crushing that follow button, becoming part of the Wasteland Tycoons. Welcome, welcome. 
Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set over here. So we got a little bit of lounge going here. I'm going to go ahead and make some more beds here in a moment. Uh, but right out here uh, is where the action usually takes place. Oh, we missed the loot there. Now, again, I have a mod that says loot detector. That tell that's what makes it yellow. See how this guy's yellow right here? That's telling me that, uh, that there's more loot down there that I didn't get. Uh, so we'll want to arrive uh, where we can watch the action. Now, once I have the kill boxes in place, I don't have to do anything. Uh, they will absolutely annihilate uh, anybody in here. Now, also, this works as the vertebrate landing area. That's how I was able to make my uh, vertebrate uh, landing pad. Uh, at my primary base there now I don't like to put it way out here on the edge because then when you arrive they get a bunch of free shots on you uh, so the best thing to do is kind of put it back a little bit uh, so that you don't uh, get attacked or what you can do is just put it like right inside a doorway and then you can just walk forward I find that works pretty great now when I when I quick travel here again I can just go here or if I'm already here I can just quick travel to the same location and it will teleport me up here so I don't have to walk up and down uh, five million times uh, which just saves me some time here on stream so I can I can get this going on. Now, we're almost done with this particular location. Uh, we just need uh, to do the kill boxes, and we need to finish up these beds. Now, I aim for 24 at every single location. That means 24 beds. That means uh, uh, 24 food, 24 water, and so on. Uh, there we go, and I think we're just going to have 23, so we'll be under by one. Or under by uh, under by one there, but close enough. Uh, we're going to go ahead and... Because uh, we only got eight people here. We don't even have that many people here yet. And now what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves uh, what I call a hanging kill box. Now, to do that, uh, we're going to have to make sure we don't fall off. Oh, my God. Ah! I'm fine. <laughs> Just messing. Just messing with you guys. Uh, let's move that off to the side. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take the kill box out now. Uh, and I hate stuff floating, but sometimes you just like... I'll come back to it later, right? I'll come back to it later. Uh, so we're going to have it hang down right there and kind of the optimum position uh, right up there. And again, we're going to go ahead and use uh, some of these things that we put back in the workbench earlier. Uh, these right here, we got about 17 of them in there. Now we have to watch uh, where we can build because uh, some of this stuff is actually hanging outside uh, the actual uh, settlement. So we're going to go ahead and see how far we can go here. Right about there. Right in the edge of the settlement is actually right about here. Okay. Uh, oh, a little bit too far. There we go. All right. Now we want to go ahead and build ourselves a kill box. Now, I love to use the concrete kit. It, I've, it's my favorite one in the entire game because uh, it makes doing stuff like this much easier. So we're going to go ahead and take this. And we're going to kind of scroll wheel it up here. As best we can. We're going to see if it lets us scroll well enough. Scrolling is acting funny. There we go. All right. Uh, we're going to try to snap it up here. There we go. And then again. And basically what we're trying to do is just kind of work it down. Like so. So it's at a level and at a location that can fire here in like 360 degrees without being obstructed. The one that was down there was much lower, uh, which is being obstructed. So we really want it to be uh, kind of in in the middle. So we really want it to be over by one, um, but we can go ahead and kind of put it side to side to get that going. Side to side, uh, there we go. It's my dream to one day play a Fallout game as a Deathclaw. Well, actually I think there is a uh, mod Somewhere for that, I believe. Uh, hmm. Well, let me go this way, but not this way. Hmm. Hmm. My scrolling is not working. What the heck? There we go. What the heck on the scrolling action? There we go. Uh, so, yeah, it won't let me put that up there. It's saying that I'm hitting the edge of the settlement. It looks like I am. Uh, so I'm going to have to backtrack it a bit. So we'll backtrack it uh, in this direction. Like so. And then we'll kind of key off that like so. And we'll end it up probably right about here. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go uh, to the other side and look back in this direction 
uh, to see if that's kind of a good angle. Now, if you put it up too high, of course, it won't be able to shoot uh, as far. So we want to kind of look at it and say, okay, can it hit it? Can it hit it from there? Can it hit this stuff down here from there? Now, I can shoot very, very far, which it can shoot right about this edge from up that high, right? So we probably want to come down one more, and we need to way move over to the side. The reason why is if they're down here, we want to have kind of a clear shot uh, from up there, right? So we need to move it over here on this side uh, so it has a nice clear shot to shoot down to this location where they typically spawn, as you can see, uh, as well as any other mobs uh, all around that area because it's going to fire in 360 degrees. So we really need to be way over here, not over there. And again, that's why I double check that kind of stuff. Uh, and of course, you make a mistake or it doesn't turn out the way you want it. Hey, that's the great thing about uh, building in Fallout 4 is the fact that you can go in and move it around however you want. You can just say, you know what? Uh, I made a boo-boo. Let me go ahead and uh, just take that back out. Uh, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Again, that's why I like to test stuff. Always pre-test stuff before you get in too far. Otherwise, you build a bunch of stuff and then realize that, oh, it's not in the right spot or whatever it is. Uh, which is a huge bump. All right, so we need to move way over there. Also why I like the jetpack, because you can use the jetpack to jump up and uh, take out some of your scaffolding. All right, so right along this side here. Looks like a better spot. Let's say right there in that corner. And again. Now it's really awkward to build this from up above, right? Um, so I try to build it from underneath. A lot easier to do so. You have a little bit easier control of your snapping and all of that. Well, let's go ahead all the way up here. Yeah, right about there. Got a nice clean shot down through there and here you only got this obstruction of this one i think that'll be a much better spot uh for that kill box so let's get into it now why do i call it the kill box is a great question uh i call it the kismet kill box because uh it's one of my inventions here on the stream i've tried uh all the ways you can do it uh, i've gone in of course made walls and traps and and all of that stuff and put my people on guard and whatnot uh, and I find really all you need is the Kismet kill box, and that's it. You just, you're good. You're good to go. Uh, let's go up just a little bit further. Up just a little bit further. Uh, thank you, uh, Lauren, coming in. Lauren J., thanks so much for dropping the dragon hammer, crushing that follow button, becoming part of the Wasteland Tycoons. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Feel free to say hello in the chat. People will actually say hi back to you. I know, it's crazy. Right? Interactive stream where you can come in, you can talk to the streamer, and you can talk to other awesome people who are hanging out in here who like the same thing that you like. I know. Amazing. 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 And I might even be able to stay up on the stairs for more than a couple minutes here without falling down. We'll find out. We will find out. There we go. Uh, we're right up against the edge of the settlement, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, send this back a little bit. Like this. Back in toward the edge of the settlement. There we go. There we go. Now we're up a bit higher. We can go ahead and try to put that in there. And again, I use the scroll wheel. Just try to scroll the wheel that into place. Uh, we've got a bit of a problem there. Uh, we can't quite put it there. But that's okay. A little jetpack. Take that out. Take that one out. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and try to bring it underneath there. Now our goal is basically to uh, bring these ones underneath here and then create a... Uh, uh, kind of a platform to put it on. So I'm going to go try to go down by a couple. Now, I'm actually going to need an extra one. The reason why I need that extra one is so that I can snap this right here to that kind of bottom edge. And then we'll take this out. And we'll go ahead and we don't need the one at the top anymore. We'll take that one out. Uh, we don't need this anymore. We can go ahead and put our uh, platforms back in. And now once we get it started, as long as we don't make a mistake and take out the wrong piece... We can then kind of work it from there. Uh, one of the things, of course, is I don't want it to uh, feel like it is uh, uh, floating. I don't like it to float. Uh, a lot of people don't like to see it floating. It activates their OCD, uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, perfectly fine if you're having OCD because I'm going to fix it very, very soon. And what I'm going to do is just do what I call walking the piece, right? So we've got these four concrete pieces, right? So I'm kind of walking them in position, and then I will also put them in position 
like this, so they're actually holding up what I call a hanging kill box. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, I have different versions of the kill box that I do use uh, quite often. And we'll work with those as well. Notice how I'm, I move the first one, and then I'm just kind of uh, walking it into position. And now I've got it in position. We're going to go ahead and put the other ones in here. So basically, it's like a hanging uh, thing that's holding it up. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead just to embellish it a little bit. We're going to go ahead and round these edges out a little bit. And then connect all this stuff together like so. Uh, a little bit more rounding just for funsies. Just because it looks cool. And there we go. So we got this hanging platform that we can go ahead and get up on like this. And then, of course, we can put some turrets on because now... Uh, we're going to have a nice free range to fire down. Look at this view, right? See, now you've got this beautiful angled view uh, that all these turrets can fire in ba basically 360 degrees. In this particular one, it's not quite 360 degrees because you have the obstruction of the concrete wall, but we're going to put it all the way around the outside so we'll be fine. Now, also, instead of using the base turrets uh, as uh, our things here, which I never use this one. That's a waste. Don't ever use that one. It just gets blown up too easy. So use a heavy machine gun here. Now, I've got a Mark 7, so this is actually the explosive uh, explosive uh, uh, turret. So you actually have different versions of turrets. Uh, you'll see the uh, Mark whatever on the side. Uh, we'll come back to those in a bit. By the way, if you also have some, say, Mark 1s, you store them in the workbench, and then you come back and try to put them back down because you can see I've got five of them. That little five number there uh, is telling me that. Uh, that actually will upgrade them sometimes uh, from Mark 1s to Mark 7s or 6s or Mark 3s, whatever uh, you uh, happen to be able to build at that location. Now, we're going to build some missile turrets. Now, I like to have the missile turrets uh, in the corners here, especially on this side, uh, so that it can try to help out uh, in that particular direction. Now, I like it to be as close on the edge as possible, and this is to allow it to shoot straight down. Right, like you can see the angle it can shoot right now. It can shoot basically straight down like that. If there's anything down there along the edge of the settlement, it'll blow that up. And I kind of feel like we're going to do some walls here too. Normally, I don't suggest walls, especially early in the game. Uh, they are a huge uh, resource burner. Uh, I don't, I don't suggest. Oh, crazy coming in with a sweet 16. Uh, thank you so much, Crazy. Of course, massive longtime supporter of the stream with that tier three love. I want to see some tier three love for Crazy in the chat, everybody. Uh, how can time be this fast still and have to wait for 76? I know, huh? Look at all those uh, coming in there. Thank you so much uh, for that uh, massive love, Crazy. Always appreciate you, man. Always appreciate you here in the stream. There we go. And again, we got the obstruction of that tree there, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, and then over here again, try to get that on the edge as best you can. Now, normally I put it in the middle if it's a straight uh, kill box, which you'll see at some of my other locations. I'll put them in the middle, but uh, on this particular kill box, since it doesn't really fire uh, in behind itself, right? It doesn't fire back that way. Uh, I will put it up against the edge as close as possible to give it that good angle of fire. Like so. Now, again, I've talked about this many times, but if you do this, where you cross connect these like this, that's okay. If you go and make sure that they also have individual connections. Because if one of these turrets gets knocked out, uh, all of your other turrets will get knocked out as well. So I like to have what I call individual connections, which is there's a separate power pylon right here in the middle, which is also feeding these uh, other turrets right here uh, and then I'll put one also on this side so it has its own separate feed like this across from this one and so on so that your turrets don't get knocked out now if one of these poles gets knocked out well then of course it'll be fed from the other pole hopefully uh, in the end now we got a bit of a problem though because we have to take power and we have to run that power down to where we are now, one way you can do that, of course, is to go up here using that wonderful jetpack and utilize the power to sit right here, right? So we can run that down and run it underneath there. Um, but we need, of course, uh, put down our different conduits to control that. 
So we're gonna do that right now. And I like to just do something simple, just try to put it on the edge here, if it so feels like it's going to do it today. If not, you can also do uh, an under one, which just kind of goes under this one right here. Again, notice how awkward that is to do it from up above. Uh, so typically you wanna kinda jump down like that. Uh, and then you can go ahead and try to uh, do something like this. And then we can grab this. There we go, and try to run it there. It's a little bit obstructed. Move it a little bit again. Try to fine tune it in such a way. Just be outside the settlement there. A little bit outside the settlement, so not letting me put that over there. Mm, let's turn the other way, too. It's turned, it's turned the other way, so the, the length of it's going like that. All right, let's try to work around here. So we're going to go ahead and use one of these little ones, and we're going to put that up here on top. And it's going to be very awkward to put that from down here, but if you got you got skills, you can get it done. There we go. And we kind of worked around it. We used a uh, in-between, and then we'll go ahead and run that down uh, directly to here. And then, as you can see, now our turrets are online and looking good. So there is hanging kill box uh, number one. Now we're also gonna build some basic kill boxes as well. Uh, some more kind of square kill boxes. So you guys can see that as well. I love to do that where it just makes you fall. Where it makes you fall down. Oh, well, I would need to get those high ones first. There's something fun about Whee! Right, because I'm in the power armor, so it's not like I'm going to fall and die. Uh, so we're good. So there we go. There's the hanging kill box. Looking fantastic. Uh, and we're just going to build some regular kill boxes so you guys can see that over here as well. Now, this is something I've developed through the game over time so that you don't have to put people on defense. You don't have to do all of that. You just want something that will absolutely annihilate anybody who messes with your settlement, right? Anybody who's so foolish as to attack your settlement. Now, you have to think about it in terms of it's going to be a square, so I want to uh, kind of back it up a little bit here and try to find a nice spot for it right there. Now, this one's going to be kind of extra high. I find here at this location, you want the, the kill boxes to be way up there, right? And then we're gonna also going to go ahead and use some of our walls that we are using earlier. And I use a lot of temporary stuff to make stuff happen. Like this. And then I'll get a sense of... Uh, where my uh, stuff is landing, like this, and like this. Now I could go in there and do a whole bunch of stuff uh, to uh, center that, but I'm gonna do it the easy way. Again, just gonna walk it into position using the ones I've already got. Grab this one here uh, and do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then uh, there it is, perfectly centered uh, where I want it to be. And we'll go in and we'll put some more uh, support poles in. Like so. Now I hope in Fallout 76 I can just blueprint my uh, kill box. And I should be good to go. Now you can blueprint the entire location, they said. I can't wait to try out all of the uh, building mechanics, how the uh, card system works, all of that stuff. And again, I know there's gameplay out there. Uh, you can send it to me, that's fine, but I'm probably not going to watch it. And the reason why is uh, uh, because you guys here watch me uh, play through, I like to do stuff live here on stream. Uh, and of course, I've played over 2,500 hours live here on stream uh, for you guys uh, here in Fallout uh, Fallout 4. And we've also played a few other games, Fallout 1, uh, here on stream as well. Uh, so now this one I'm going to go ahead and put way on the edge, but actually I'm going to put a rocket one way on this edge here. And then same thing over here. We're really going to just rock it up this side. I feel like heavy rockets on this side. Right there. There we go. Let's just go crazy on the rockets today. Uh, and I do like to mix damage types. So, you know, you might want to have a heavy laser. And then come in with your machine gun turrets. Let's see if we can squeeze two of them in there. That's going to be pretty tough. That's going to be tough. 
Again, I just kind of wait till it turns to see if I can squeeze it in there. Maybe move this one a little bit further. Again, see this turret turns, so you got to kind of find a spot in which it turns. Now, at any point, if it turns yellow, in this case, I'm in my power armor, uh, then you know you can put it down. Eh, not quite. Let's go ahead and try to nudge it over a little bit. Nudge this one over. Again, the reason why I don't have them in the middle, the reason why I don't have them in the, uh, up on the edge, is because I want them in the middle so they can fire in both directions. Also good to rotate this when you're trying to put it down. Like that, and and then look at its rotation. How far is it going to rotate? That's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, and we'll try to sneak that other one in. Not that we really need it. It's just fun to have uh, a lot of turrets in there. All right, this is going to be pretty crazy. Now, one of the most awkward things I find in the game uh, that they've kind of messed with here is the uh, is the connection lines, right? Like if I'm trying to get this connection line here, it's really, really awkward, right? Like I'm trying to roll over it. It's not letting me get the connection line. I find that the connection line has a tendency to be way away from it where it actually is, way below or way above. Uh, like great example if I'm trying to do this, but I can just go ahead and work around it by just doing that or connecting it this way. Because uh, this one is actually connected to that one. It actually connected incorrectly. Uh, but I don't even want to do that, by the way, everybody. I want to I want to make sure that they have their own separate connections. So you want to go ahead. If they're shooting at these turrets and they take one of these turrets out, you want to make sure that it has the ability to, uh, to connect right up here. Get up here so I can get over the top of that thing. Duck. There we go. All right. Uh, and again, we'll take this. We'll run up there. <coughs> again, we're running individual lines to all of the turrets. Like so. Again, very awkward. Awkward to do the line sometimes, but there we go. So they would have to take out the, the power pylon uh, instead of taking out just the individual uh, thing, which happens very rarely. That does happen sometimes, though, uh, but it happens very, very rarely. All right, same thing over here. We need some power, uh, and we have some power already run uh, over on this side. And this is what I would call a standard Kismet kill box here, uh, where it just has amazing ability to fire in 360 degrees. So if there's anything over here, if there's anything down there, if there's anything beyond the settlement, Anything like that that isn't directly underneath. Of course, the higher up you go, uh, the uh, more underneath it it can be, right? The, the easier it is for them to get underneath it, right? Now, if it's lower, of course, it can fire before they get underneath there uh, as well. But they're probably not going to end up right there because that's right on the edge. They would have to run all the way around to get there, uh, to get to that location. Same thing over here. They would have to make their way up and around. Uh, very rare that they're going to end up uh, being underneath this kill box anyway. Uh, so I'm going to take all this out now because I don't need those steps anymore. And now we need some power. And again, we're running out power over here. So we'll go ahead and use some of my favorite things that I like to use to protect my power. Uh, and that is my wood kit here. Uh, very easy to do this very early in the game. Uh, is to put your power up on a pedestal. Now, the reason why you want to do that, of course, is so that your power doesn't get damaged in the middle of a battle. Uh, somebody's shooting rockets off or whatever. It'll be up higher. Uh, less chance it's going to get damaged. I find very rarely does my stuff get damaged. Now, notice that I'm kind of connecting it. I'm pretty close to this one. I'm now going to pick this up and move this as far as it'll let me go. But then also notice that I've lost my connection there, right? So the better thing to do is actually check the distance by taking this. And moving this as far as you can until it turns uh, until it turns uh, red in this case. Uh, normally it'll be green when you're doing it if you're not in your power armor. So let's say right about there. Then I'll go ahead and grab this, move this about the same distance, a little bit less. Then I'll lift it up, put it up here, and try to find that magic spot, which is right there. All right, a little bit back further because, of course, you're going to have the difference in the line length. 
uh, based on how high you put it. Right there. And there we go. Now we've got that maximum wire length, minimum amount of resource that we need to use. It may still be too far. But let's go ahead and try it. Oh, yeah, that's definitely too far. Again, same thing. Go in, wood kit, miscellaneous. Put down our little bridge right here. Actually, I'll just put it off to the side first. And then we'll go in, use our nice big uh, power pylon. Attach them first. Move it till it's kind of maximum distance, which plenty to go right about there. Give me a general idea. Let's move it back just a little bit. And then we'll try to stack that in there. Lift that up. And take this and use our scroll wheel and try to snap it. There we go. So you can actually connect it from down here. I don't have to go up here to connect it. And then we watch the turrets. If the turrets are turning, and also they turn red because of my mods, uh, or because of my targeting HUD, uh, you can see now that all my turrets are functioning properly. And again, if someone's attacking from this side, they will turn around and fire in this direction. Uh, so there we go. Another Kismet kill box. We only need one more. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and put it right over here, uh, over the side here. Now, we actually have this kill box over here can very well uh, protect this area here. Uh, and that side, of course, can protect everything on that side. So we do have a lot of protection. Uh, the only thing is, is that it can't protect right here where they sometimes spawn, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just put one over here in the corner to try to protect uh, kind of this edge. Also to help with a little bit of crossfire in that direction, help in this direction here. Uh, we're going to put this one fairly low. We don't need to have this one up very, very high because uh, it's going to really protect more of the closer part of the base. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. Just try to uh, find a nice spot for us to put this concrete thing. And then here we go. And we'll put it up, say, two is good enough. And we'll put this in here to get our floor started. Take this out, take that out, walk this a bit. There we go. This this really activates my creativity every time I get I get into building mode here. Like okay, I do this and I do the other thing and the other thing. And there we go, looking good. Now this one I want to go kind of along the edge of the settlement here, so kind of square with the edge of the settlement, uh, so it'll have that ability to fire uh, in all those directions. Nice, liking it. And we're just going to kind of do the same kind of thing over here. Got to be efficient here, and we're going to go kind of crazy with our rocket turrets because I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the rocket turret action. And we're going to put this one way up on the edge. I like to put the ones at the end on the edge. So again, it gives it that ability to fire straight down. I find that everything usually comes kind of catty corner to those corners. Uh, and I said we just, you know what, get go crazy here. We're just going to go crazy. Go crazy. Now, a lot of the other locations here, I'm going to be doing a lot smaller vaults. Uh, just to kind of move us along a bit here on our vault building, because I think we're going to run out of time. Uh, before Fallout 76, we're going to try to push forward here very, very quickly again. And put that right there. Connect it individually to each of these, like so. One of the things is, also, you can't jump. Because uh, what will happen is it'll think you want to put a wire down. So when you're trying to jump over stuff while you're putting these wires down, it'll also feel real awkward. Uh, now, same thing over here. The easy way to run that power. We're just going to go ahead and use that kind of base idea. Now, we can also run conduit. We can do a whole bunch of uh, various different stuff. Um, but we're just going to go simple on the rest of this here. Just do what I would normally do. Again, I usually put it down first. Connect it nice and close. Let's actually move this out of the way, and we'll move it as far as we need to go. Yeah, let's say right about there is probably good enough. And then we'll put our thing down. Run it up there. Run it from here. 
Up to there, looking good. All right, like that. And all of our kill boxes are up and running. Normally I build one to three kill boxes at each location uh, to cover all of the various areas uh, that they may attack. This one's gonna cover down here. That one's gonna cover the far side. Uh, and our hanging kill box is actually gonna help in all uh, 360 degrees. Uh, so looking good. Looking good on that. So we have nine people, 24 food, 40 water, 100 power, 292 defense. I think that's way more than enough. 23 beds and 72 happiness and rising. Uh, that's a done right there. That's a done. And of course, I could go through and really embellish it and do all sorts of uh, stuff to it. I'll leave it to you guys uh, to do all of that really, a really big embellishment of it. Now, one of the things we also want to do is we want to go ahead and test out our kill boxes here. We're going to run up the way to that town up there here in a minute. Uh, just to try to do something different, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, work on some more settlements. But look at that, baby. Beautiful. Now, of course, I can go in and do the underpingings and buildings and all that stuff. You guys have already seen me do that. You get the idea. We'll just say that it's connected to the side of this, and that's what's supporting it for now. Uh, but as you can see, the kill box can actually see way outside of the settlement. Uh, a lot of stuff spawns on this side. You always want to look at where stuff spawns, where stuff attacks your uh, uh, provisioners and whatnot. Uh, and this side of the kill box is probably going to get uh, a good amount of action along with that side over there. Of course, stuff spawning on that side uh, as well. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, stuff over here. Let's go ahead and save. Uh, there's a lot of stuff over here to battle with, and it respawns quite often, uh, especially when you're not in the new survival mode. When, if you're in the new survival mode, it actually spawns a lot less. So you can just try to come in here and get into some trouble. Notice how I don't need a scope? All I need is that little green circle. That green circle, I stick it on her head, pow, pow, pow. I don't even need bats. I don't really even need it. But I do like to watch out for bad guys. Of course, you can hit Q a bunch of times, see if anything tries to uh, show up. And let's go over here and see if it respawned. Oh, it did. Look at all this ammo in here. Lots of ammo in there. Tried to hit me with that thing. So usually there's a turret right there, which we got. Uh, and we shot somebody way over here. Oh, more ammo. Thank you very much. Again, places like this are pretty great. Uh, especially when they respawn, because they don't respawn as much enemies as when they first started. So if you are getting low on ammo and whatnot, it's good to head back to these. Now, if you are playing the survival mode, know that these places take a lot longer to respawn. They usually take two weeks in-game to respawn. Uh, all other modes, uh, they respawn a lot faster. Man, I don't even remember where I shot her from. I don't even remember. Is it up here? I was up there and I zapped her. Right over here. Where'd she go? She got zapped and disappeared. Dissim appeared over here. Huh. Now, I do have uh, a mod that allows me to see my Oh, she was up on top there. That's right. That's pretty rare they spawn up there, by the way. Pretty rare they spawn up on top. Usually they spawn uh, right there where you first come in. All right, took care of that. Now, one of the things we haven't done yet in this playthrough, though I have done it in previous playthroughs, uh, is this area over here. Oh. Watch out for that. Now, of course, I can be one, one shot killed by those. Uh, here in very hard mode or in survival mode, uh, you can be one shot by grenades or uh, rockets or any of that stuff. Uh, so here we are. We're here in Salem. Uh, I don't think I don't know what you're up to, birds. Don't think I don't know what you're up to. You guys have ever played through the Institute? Uh, part, uh, look at those monitors. Look out! Whew, that was close. It was an evil car, almost got me. 
I love blowing up cars. It is super, super fun. My goal to blow up every single car in the wasteland. And frankly, I am really good at it. I will probably do the same in Fallout 76. No cars will be safe, so don't stand by no cars. Of course, it'll be a lot more dangerous, of course, uh, in Fallout 76, because I might aggro uh, somebody else. Uh, and they say it's not too griefy yet, but that's because they haven't let the uh, general public in yet. Uh, you know there's going to be some griefers in there uh, as well. They have tried to put in some anti-grief mechanics. Notice I'm grabbing all the loot, of course, uh, so we can use that for our settlements later. We can sell it or just use the raw materials and break down the raw materials and whatnot. Uh, I love to loot. Sometimes I, I bypass super looting, but this will be the first time we come into this area. So I will super loot it also to find uh, various different stuff like uh, bobbleheads and magazines and stuff like that. I do love to loot me some loot. Uh, yeah, man, I haven't been over this way in a very long time. It's been quite a while. All right, I think we got most of the loot. We missed some loot, no big deal. No biggie. All right. This is actually a really great storyline in this area. I ain't running out of ammo anytime soon, Krabby. Here's something going in this direction. Now, of course, our combat shotgun is going to be incredibly useful. There you go. Wiped out those Meyer lurks. Very easy to do with a combat shotgun because you're AoEing. Get out of the street before any more of them catch wind of you. Look, I'll open the gate and you get in here quick. I'm going to let you in the bunker. Don't make me regret that. You're probably going to regret it. Let me close that for you too, buddy. There we go. It's Barney in the bunker. Barney in the bunker. Barney in the bunker. What's up, Barney? He's going down in the bunker. I'm going to grab all your loot first. Leave your caps laying around. I'm going to grab them. I'm going to grab them all. Then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to see what else you got laying around. You got yourself a work uh, workbench. Nothing currently in the workbench. And, oh, got some ammo up here. We'll be taking all of that. Thank you very much. Anything else? And I'm stealing his bucket. Because that's just the way I am. Activate the fuse box. Fail. Fail. All right. Now, if you haven't done this before, this is actually a really fun uh, little quest. There's actually a lot of really great uh, kind of mini quests in the game that really don't, they don't affect the main storyline. Uh, but I love these side quests and found quests uh, that they have in game. Uh, so let me go ahead and turn this back up again, and we'll listen to a little bit of the storyline. What's up, Barney? Son, did someone drop you on your head as a baby, or did you have to work to get this stupid? Uh, I could have handled myself. I could have handled myself. Oh, I saw how you handle yourself, froze on the spot like a deer in headlights. If it weren't for me, you would have been cut up like a paper doll. Luckily, I've got Reba here to help me crack those crabs wide open. Isn't that right, girl? Uh, who's Reba? Are you talking about your gun? Who's Reba? Are, are you talking about your gun? She's not just a gun. She's top of the line. Best gun in the Commonwealth. Made her with my own two hands. Oh, where are my manners? Introductions. Barney Rook, commander of the Salem Volunteer Militia, at your service. I'm also the quartermaster, sergeant at arms, and scribes for all official meetings. This here is Reba. But you two already met when she saved your life. Uh, I kind of saved your life, but all right, bro. All right, uh, thank you so much to uh, Dazfir. Dazfir, oh, you tried to get me, but I finished, I didn't finish your name. Uh, thanks so much for being in the stream, although I'm not a big fan of your name. Uh, so watch out with that name in my chat, or you may get banned. Uh, King Leopold says, hey, Kesman in chat. Hey, King Leopold, always great to see you. Always great to see you. 
Uh, is it just the two of you? Where is everyone else? You two have your work cut out for you. Uh, just the two of you. Have you considered a membership drive? <laughs> I like that one. Uh, thank you, Reba, and thank you, Barney. Uh, is there anyone else? You two have got your work cut out for Oops. you. It was a lot easier when it wasn't just I the meant to two press one, but I pressed two. The SBM remains vigilant, despite overwhelming odds against us. Now, I'd love to sit here gabbing all day like a couple of housewives, but we've got some work to do. And by we, I most definitely mean you. Before you showed up, the Mire Lurks had been mostly quiet. And those that were a problem were quickly dispatched by my turret defense system. Since things had been quiet lately, I took the turrets offline to conserve ammunition. Obviously, they need to be reactivated. And that's your mission, soldier. I'm going to continue to hold down the home front while you go reactivate the turrets. Uh, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Look, don't tell Reba, but I've been working on a sister for her in my spare time. I'm thinking of calling her Reba, too. She's in the back room. She's not as tough as her older sister, but she's all yours if you help me out. Reba would probably get jealous anyway. The turrets should be easy enough to find. They're up high in strategic locations around town. Just be careful. All your noise probably woke up more crabbies and other mire lurks. The town could be crawling with them by now. Mm, yep. Well, first I'm going to take all your stuff. Because I appreciate free loot. I appreciate free stuff. We thank you for all the loot. Oh, all these provisions that you have. Oh, why don't I just take all those? Oh, thank you. My settlements appreciate the donation. <laughs> Get that up off the shelf. What we got in there? Nothing. Nothing in there. Let's go. Let's get this going on. Let's steal his shovel and his buckets and everything. He's like, where did my stuff go? I don't know. I don't know what happened to it. You must have misplaced it. Oh, look at what we got right here. Excellent. Ballistic weapons permanently do 5% critical damage. Nice. We'll be taking that. Again, that's why I super loot, because I don't remember where those things are. I don't remember where they all are, and I ain't gonna remember. Because I don't need to. I just go in super loot, find myself some sweet stuff, and move along. There we go. There we go. Now, he's saying Reba's the best in the uh, wasteland, which actually is not too bad. It's actually really good versus Meyer Lurks. Especially early in the game, where if you uh, kind of come along this area very early... Uh, you can uh, find a pretty decent weapon. Pretty decent. Up in here, we're taking all of his loot. Got all that. And, oh, we need that door to unlock that uh, in the kitchen. But he's not going to let us do that right now. We don't want to aggro the dude. Though you could just annihilate this guy and take his gun. You just, to you just totally could, right? You could just, bam, give me that gun, bro. And then you don't have to do all this other stuff. But I like to do the other stuff. I like to do the quest line. Uh, I like to do these side quest lines. They're very, very fun. Very fun to do. Uh, they give you sometimes really great weapons or kind of uh, neat stuff uh, that you can use in your playthrough. Very unique items. Even if you're just going to put it like in a uh, museum, uh, like I do sometimes. I put all my legendaries and whatnot uh, in the museums. And, of course, power armor and all of that. Uh, all the different sets of power armor, which is a lot of fun. A lot of fun as well. Huh. I don't see it there, pancakes. I just saw your uh, I just saw your message. Uh, I don't see it in my list. It might be a Twitch thing because I have seen some uh, resubs come through. So uh, I would contact Twitch directly uh, and see uh, why that didn't come through. I would definitely contact them. Another way to double check their pancakes is to say something in the chat. Uh, by the way, mods, if the, if they say something in the chat and it shows their little icon, then it did go through. 
If it doesn't show their little uh, their little uh, badge, then that means that uh, it didn't go through. So uh, yeah, that's another way to test it. And if you try it once and it doesn't show, you can also uh, refresh the stream and then try it again uh, and see if it comes through that. Now I have the jetpack, so it makes it super easy for me to kind of just sneak around. I also have the targeting HUD, so I can see exactly where they are right there, which makes this uh, this quest super super easy for me anyway. Uh, so we're trying to run around and we're trying to find uh, where these turrets are located. Wait for it. Wait for it. Do, 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 do. You like explosions, you're in the right spot. Uh, all right. Oh, look at this over here. Look at this guy, sneaky, sneaky over there. We got a bunch of them over there, sneaky, sneaky. Kind of sliding down here. Uh, so we're trying to find the areas in which we can activate these turrets. Back over this way. So we can kind of use, utilize our jetpack, or we just run along the ground. Uh, you can see there's a way up there. You want to kind of survey where you want to go. Now me, I am a, a deadly wasteland tycoon. Uh, I could eliminate all of these people if I want to. But we're going to just try to get the turrets going. First. And now see they have activated underneath me. I like to get the high ground, of course, uh, much better. Look how much he damaged me for. Look at that. Woo, that was a lot of damage. I also damaged myself when I was shooting at the ground, uh, which can happen. All right, let's go ahead and use the terminal. Now, you can't go in here and uh, uh, enter password. Activate turret. All right, we got a turret up and running up here. Now, I find in this particular quest that I rarely ever get the turrets done before I kill everybody and everything in here. Oh, there was a rifle there. There was a rifle. Let's see. What was that one? Right there. It was uh, Institute Rifle of Staggering. Nice, nice. Uh, all right. I rarely ever get it done before I just blast them, before I get the turrets working. Uh, but we're going to try to get a few turrets working here before we blast them. There we go. Enter password. Again, you want to be in a place where they can't reach you. So now I'm up there. Uh, let's go ahead and jetpack over this way. Got two turrets there. We got a turret down there. You need to kind of look in here and say, okay, where are we going on this one? Uh, and it actually tells you uh, where you want to go uh, in your uh, uh, in your radar right here. You see, I want to go in this direction. Like so, there's one right down there. And, of course, there's one over there. See some guys there. Now, you can just kind of sneaky sneak around if you're tricky enough. Like so. Ooh, that's a that's a tricky edge to do. And we got that guy there, so we want to go ahead and just walk here. Now, see, the actual gameplay changes a lot uh, if you do use the jetpack, which I find really really fun. Uh, to use the jetpack just for kind of running from place to place and whatnot. Oh, I hear you down there. Oh, that one's already destroyed. I 
like blowing stuff up. I'm not gonna lie. I like to blow stuff up. Now I could go through here and annihilate. Annihilate all these uh, guys if I really wanted to, but we're gonna be have a little bit of fun here and just kinda sneaky sneak around a little bit. There we go. High ground. All right, one more to go over there in the main thing. Go back up here. Notice I don't hold the I don't hold the jetpack down. I just kind of tap it. By the way, if you want to move faster, you get your smallest weapon, and it allows you to move faster. Also, you want to do a first jump, then just tap, real gentle, over here, like so. Jump. There we go. I forget where the one is here. I forget where it is. Right there. There it is. All right. That's pretty easy. Nope. Need a password. Activate turret. There we go. Turret's activated. Now we're going to have some fun. Oops, took out. Now I'm gonna drag him over here. Of course. Just like the kids make kill boxes. I'm gonna try to get him caught in a crossfire. Now his turrets are terrible. He's got those junky turrets that take forever. Let's forget that. Let's go get this done. Come on, little suckers. Here's Kismet. Come on, come on out here. Come and bring it. Bring it. Kismet's on the street. Let's go. Who wants some of this? Come on. I, I know there's more of you. Again, combat explosive shotgun. Four to win. Come on out of here. Now again, those turrets should turn and fire, but they're not gonna do much damage. So explosive shotgun does a great job. Now you also should be listening for mobs sneaking up on you, like I heard that one that was trying to get me. And we're gonna go over here and get this uh, kind of king one here. Now, again, I'm in very hard mode, so I can be one or two shot by these mobs. So be at the ready. Gotta get them before they get you. One of Barney's turrets got wiped out. Probably for me. Probably from me wiping them out. Skull Troops or Slayer coming in, uh, dropping the Dragon Hammer, crushing the follow button, becoming part of the Wasteland Tycoons. Welcome, welcome. Oh, I hear some turret action up there. What did I do? I hit my caps lock. Might as well get all the loot while we're here. Look at this guy. the rampage oh what's that 
What was that one? By the way, we got the laser rifle too, which I think is very fun. My boy gave me that. My little boy. My little baby boy. Knows how to make weapons. Proud of that boy. I'm proud of that boy. What was it? Uh, I think it was this one. Uh, final shot deals twice as much normal damage. Nice. I think that's the one. What's the one we had before? I have no idea what the heck that was. It was something. It was something, something, everybody. All right. Again, we're patrolling the streets, taking out all the bad guys. Getting that sweet, sweet loot to build up them settlements. Again, sometimes, you know, I don't just build settlements or I don't just uh, quest. I try to switch back and forth uh, to try to mix it up a bit. Also, when I open a door, I kind of step back a little bit in case something explodes in my face. Nope. Nothing in there. Nothing in the boats. Looking good. Nothing on the pier there. All right, looking good. Let's go this way. Now, by the way, if you wanted to, you could pick up this uh, tire. You could carry it all the way back to your settlement and then throw it down and then scrap it. For those who haven't heard my uh, kiss of a tip on that one, give yourself some more resources if you so chose to do that. Let's just go into each and every one of these little spots, make sure that we've uh, super looted all the stuff. That basketball. Boom! Shoot them hoops! You can actually play basketball in here, which is pretty fun. Shoot them hoops, everybody. All right, found that. There's nothing up on that one. Get our basketball. Look at all this loot just laying around. You up there, crazy guy? Nope. He not up there. Taking care of business here, everybody. Getting that loot while I'm at it. All right, going in the front door. Now, we've already wiped out most of the peeps in this area, but we also need to always be listening because they do like to spontaneously sneak up behind you. Sometimes I call a little bit of hacks on that, too, because they're, they weren't there a second ago, and then all of a sudden, there they are, right in my face. Yep. A little bit of hacks action. All right. Looking good there. Oh, look. Speaking of, Mr. Dude who ran away and came back again because obviously I did, did some hits on him. Those turrets are completely useless. At least at this level. The terminal there. Doesn't do us any good, but let's try to do it. Nope. Can't even access that terminal. Always be looking in the direction that you're going. Oh, overburden. Overburden with sweet, sweet loot. All that loot. Now, I don't even look at the loot anymore. It's just general loot, you know, uh, different resources and whatnot, bottles. Uh, I don't typically look at the individual loot at this point in the game, uh, unless it's a legendary or something like that. Uh, that might be interesting for you guys to see. But other than that, I typically loot fairly fast. Like that. And just look for any unique stuff. Hang around. It goes up. This goes out here. We already got that. The turret already got blew up. The turrets suck, bro. You got sucky turrets. You need a Kismet kill box. What you need, bro. You need a Kismet kill box up in here. Ooh, some ammo. Got one turret that survived. Oh, we got the that got the Myrler catchlings. There's dead Myrlers everywhere. Awesome. Awesome. Again, I didn't have to help this guy at all. I could have just literally went in there and just murdered him and took his thing. Could have murderized him.
Gotta get that beanie. Gotta get that beanie. Gotta get that free loot. Yeah, we're just kind of clean house here a little bit. Then we're gonna play some No Man's Sky and then some Learn to Play later. Lots of uh, content coming up tonight. Lots of fun stuff. Oh man, I love the loot. I can just loot for endless hours. I am, because uh, I know what it equals, right? I know that it equals those big settlements that I'm building uh, and all that other stuff. Look at it, another turret just wiped out. Like two seconds, you st it still ends up where you end up blowing everything up because the turrets get damaged or wiped out very, very quickly. All right. Looking good. I believe we got the bulk of the lure. We could go in the church and get some in there too, but we're just going to go ahead and get it. Let's see. Can't, Sandy Coves. There we go. Sandy Coves uh, Coalescent Home. kind of cool it went up on the on its edge there up on the edge we are so thanks for that loot though overburden oh, uh hence the reason why mk1 turrets suck exactly that's why i never use them they are the worst they are the worst All right, let's go back talk to dude. Talk to dude hanging out in his basement. Hey, Pokey, what's up? What's up? Uh, Glutch, a uh, gut cleavage coming in. Hello, best friend. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Um, uh, catch up on chat a little bit. I was getting focused there, getting focused, wiping out those Meyer lurks or Murlocs if you're from Wow. <laughs> There we go. Boats and hoes. <laughs> there you go. Hey, oh, this is Rescue. I haven't come in earlier than three hours in a long time. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, we've got a lot uh, stacked and ready to do today. Again, we're, we're doing a bunch of stuff here in Fallout. Uh, then we're on to seven days. Or not seven days. We're on to uh, No Man's Sky, eventually seven days. And then on to... You did to... it, didn't you? <laughs> I could hear that sweet, sweet machine gun music all the way down here. You almost caught me in Reba Midwalls. There you go. Will they come back? Is that it? Will they come back? They might, but they'll have something to think about if they do. Now, about that reward. Here's a key to my workshop in the bunker. Reba 2 should be sitting on the table in there. I'd say you earned her. Now, if you'll excuse me, I believe today is earmarked for some target practice. The Salem Volunteer Militia never rests. Excuse me. You're a little crazy, bro, but doing a good job. Kismet never rests until all the loot has been taken from each and every location. Look at this free loot. Give me all that free loot. Courage today, victory tomorrow. Exactly. I'm taking all your stuff, like so. And now I'm taking Reba too. Boom! Uh, does 50% more damage against Meyer Lurks and Bugs, which is actually a really great uh, sniper weapon. Uh, we'll go ahead and take that. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a look at it uh, and test it out a little bit. Now, if you do leave some of the Meyer Lurks behind, uh, which I have done in previous playthroughs, uh, you can go in. Uh, let me find it here. Uh, Reba 2, there it is. Uh, you can go in and do some fun sniping, uh, which I love to do. I love to snipe. I love to snipe stuff. Get our snipey snipe on. So we'll head up here. We'll do a little bit of snipe in action. Here at the Salem area. Now, we also got another old folks home we can do there. There's a whole other storyline in there. Uh, there's a whole bunch of story stuff that we can do in here big time. Uh, there we go. Uh, I don't think you're on Kia. I had checked earlier. I uh, don't think I was on Kia. Kids, I watched uh, one of your seven days to die VODs on YouTube to help 
teach me electricity. I kept you on double speed the whole time. And I must say that two times speed sounds pretty cool. <laughs> I have heard that people do that. They watch my videos at two times speed. That's fine. Uh, go for it. I uh, was lurking on your Rocket League uh, last night, Pokey. Uh, your goal made someone rage quit. Way to go. There you go. Making other people rage quit? That's the bestest. That's the bestest. All right. Kurt, you get your snipe on. Yeah. Where'd that bird go? Makes me want to come in here and give him some better turrets. Way better turrets. Now, of course, earlier in the game, which is where you should show up here, uh, this is actually a really great weapon. You go, bird. He's down there somewhere. Dead bird now. I think I don't know what you're up to. I love to snipe, just not in this game. I find uh, using the Overseer's Guardian as a non-snipe weapon way better. Uh, all right, so I think we've got that done. We'll come back and we'll do uh, this kind of quest over here on this side. Uh, next time, so we're going to kind of run over here and get ourselves prepped and ready. Really put this loot down, but well, at least you had a pack of cigarettes. Uh, but we're not going to because I love to collect loot I'm on the back way here There's a lot of like uh, ways that you normally don't go because you go, usually go along the main roads and the main areas I do love to go around these kind of back ways and you know, see what's over this thing. What's down there? What's over that way evil birds? I know what you're up to I know what you're doing over there. Oh, this is the outhouse? Uh, the Bowling Kids League. Can't open that. Oh. You never know what you might find out here. Little lifeguard area. That's how you do that. Look at this. Tons of loot. Oh, speaking of, look at all this loot. Holy moly. Holy moly, loving it, loving it. Uh, all right. I love to see people get mad and leave when those types of games. Yeah, it's too bad that people uh, can't control their emotions as an adult. They're either, they either are 12, which eh, if you're 12, I guess is more understandable. You haven't learned to control your emotions yet. Uh, but... If you're not 12, then you should have some sort of control over your emotions. Though everybody does uh, get upset. You know, it's, not, it's okay to have feelings. It's okay to be angry from time to time. It's just how, how much in control of it are you? Right? How much can you control your emotions uh, in your life? If you're just flying off the handle every single time after every little thing, yeah, you need to get that in check. Because uh, that's just a rough life. And it's also rough for everybody around you. Uh, there we go. Uh, Kesman, have you ever ran into Reggie Blagara? I don't know if I have. I, I don't even know. I don't. It doesn't sound familiar to me. But that doesn't mean I haven't ran into him at some point. If he's in the game. Or unless you're doing a trick question. Hold on. 
Let's try our new weapon. Let's try our new weapon, the Reba 2. Yo, sent sturdy armor of punishing. Of course, the one I shoot at was a legendary. Now, in uh, in survival mode, I probably would have died right there. Uh, especially if it was early game. Because that mob would have been doing an insane amount of damage uh, in survival mode. But then again, dying is part of the fun. All right, I think we're going to leave off right here. Uh, we're going to go play some uh, No Man's Sky. So let's get that going. Uh, Kismet, uh, yeah, da, 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 I love, uh, see people get mad, uh, yep. Uh, it's kind of funny when people rage quit, though. She's just like, oh my gosh, here we go. Reba! Yeah, like, uh, Reba the singer, right? Right? Uh, alright, let's go ahead and go back to my overseer's office, let's do it. All right, everybody, that was super fun. Uh, man, it's always fun to kind of mix it up, right? Do some building. Uh, we did finish our build there at uh, at the uh, lighthouse. Uh, and, of course, we collected a ton of materials. We kind of did that area at the end there. Uh, and then, of course, we're going to build some more uh, settlements uh, later on. And now, if you are watching this in the future on YouTube, of course, watch for the next one because uh, we're going to play some No Man's Sky in just a second. Hey everybody, Kismet here. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button right in the center of the screen. Also, check me out live on twitch.tv slash kismet. I'll see you all next time. 